Hey there everybody, Cybercroy here, and today we're gonna play one of my most favorite games of all time, Banjo-Kazooie! Yay! Now, for a little story uh, of um, the curse that this video has brought me, this is literally the fourth time trying to complete this video here. Um, so to kind of have the whole rundown of what happened, <laughs> on my initial playthrough, I got about halfway through the game, but it was like two o'clock in the morning and I was just like absolutely dead tired. Like I could not complete it. There was just no way. Uh, so I waited for next week to try to do it, uh, to do a 100% run here. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, it's all one big video rather than having to be cut up and stuff like that. So I did the video, I went through all the whole thing and when I went to go to rewatch it, I found out that the audio was really quiet on my end, right? I had done tests after tests. I usually spend like five, 10 minutes testing out the audio, making sure that the, my mic is picked up and everything's good. But for some reason, Banjo-Kazooie is just like super loud. I'm really not sure why. Um, so that didn't really turn out too well. And then last night I was like, okay, I gotta redo the video. I wanna make sure it's perfect. I wanna make sure that this is good. <laughs> this video is good and watchable. Uh, so I did it last night. Uh, audio was flawless, worked really, really well. Very happy with that. But then I noticed I was watching my gameplay footage and it was stuttering the entire video through. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Right, two full playthroughs of this game and I can't even use it. And not to mention it was like 48 gigs big, right? The, the save file was like 48 gigs. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? Like this has never happened with any other game I've done. And uh, you know, full disclosure, I, I am recording a whole bunch of videos in advance to make sure that my schedule is um, consistent, right? Cause I wanna make sure that the videos are coming out uh, on a very consistent basis. And you know, I, I'm also working outside of, of doing these videos so I you know I may not have time to do it so that's why I wanted a, a big backlog in order to get it all done uh, to make myself consistent so videos coming out Wednesdays Fridays and Saturdays um, at least for the first month anyway I hope to keep that schedule going for as long as I can so that's just a little bit of history so this is literally the fourth time trying to make this video very annoying very painful <laughs> But no, the, the reason why I do this is because I love Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I love this game so much and I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to play the game over and over and over again to make sure that my recording is good and everything's fine. And, uh, you know, hopefully my recording is good this time. <laughs> I changed the settings. I, I, you know, I tested it out. It should be good. It should be good this time. So, all right. All right. So now that that's over, let me, uh, I kind of want to go over something a little bit here. So. Typically when you hold a Nintendo 64 controller, uh, I see most people hold it like this, where they have their thumb over their, uh, the control stick, and then they have the index finger over the Z button, and then using your right hand for the A, B, C buttons and stuff like that, right? But I always found that to be like super annoying because your thumb would like fall off of the control stick and it would just be kind of a pain in the ass. So I always hold it like this with my thumb and index finger, or even my middle finger really, holding over top of the control stick with using my middle finger on my right hand to hit the Z button. Uh, I always love holding the controller this way because it, I feel like it gives me a heck of a lot more control over the characters. It gives me more fine movement instead of having to like really flex your thumb muscles, I guess, when you're doing it the, the traditional way. But um, yeah, I just kind of wondered, like, do uh, do most people, like, do all, like, <laughs> do, do, do people hold it the way that I do, or is it just always the more traditional way? So, it's kind of an interesting thought, little thing that, uh, that I've done. So, anyways, finally, let's get to it, hopefully for the final time. Banjo Kazooie, let's do it, full playthrough, let's do this. Here we go. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, Banjo-Kazooie is one of my most favorite video game franchises of all time. Uh, I love these games so much. And, uh, you know, again, testament, having to do this video for the fourth time. But uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's watch the intro video here. Thank you. 
Yeah, Banjo Kazooie. Okay. Let's just jump into it real quick. All right, so here's the save files. This was the save file uh, from before. Seven hours, 35 minutes. Uh, this was the first attempt that I've done where I beat the game five hours, 49 minutes. I think that's okay. Um, and then this was the latest one that I did yesterday, five hours, 28 minutes. So I managed to cut about 20 minutes off from the last one. So I, I think it'd be kind of fun to make sure that uh, try to get all the save files under six hours. So we're gonna erase this guy right here. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Do it. Do it. Do it. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. For the fourth time. Man, you zoo. <laughs> and every time I have to do it, I gotta do this stupid voice acting. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten a little bit better as as each playthrough has gone by. Okay. Ooh, spooky. Ding pot, ding pot, by the bench. Who is the nicest looking wench? Why, it's Grunty any day. She really takes my breath away. <coughs> yes, you're right. I'm rather proud. My looks stand me out from the crowd. Uh, but there is this girl. What do you mean? This cannot be. There's no one more prettier than me. Why, it's Tootie, young and small. She's the prettiest girl of all. No, 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 you must be mad. Yes, sir, beauty can't be had. Unfortunately, I think you're fine. It's Tootie, she's cute and kind. We'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> Hi there, Tootie. What are you going to do today? When my big lazy brother wakes up, we're going on an adventure. Wake up! I want to go on an adventure, too! Yeah, my Kazooie sucks. If Tootie thinks she's fairer than me, I'll steal her looks and ugly she'll be. Is that your brother? Wait, Mr. Mole, I can't see him! Up in the sky! <laughs> I don't think so, is that? Come to me, my little pretty. You'll soon be ugly. What a pity. Okay, so there's a part... You're gonna hear glass shatter. Yeah, right there. And then you have Grunty's face that kind of goes through... It's like on the window-ish. I always thought when, when I first saw that cutscene, I initially thought that Grunty like smashed her head through the window. <laughs> It's pretty funny how it kind of lines up like that. Manzo, wake up! Now! <gasps> what do you want, Zoe? Let's go outside! There's trouble! <laughs> okay, so for those people who know Banjo Kazooie and for those who don't, uh, so this game is very, uh, like, as you progress through the game, you're going to learn different moves to help you, like, tackle different platforming challenges and all that kind of stuff. But at the very beginning of the game right here, you can barely jump, you can't do anything. You push the B button, nothing happens, you can't do anything, right? Um, and you have to train to learn the moves. In Spiral Mountain, you learn all of the basic moves, right? But there is actually one move that Banjo does know how to do. 
in order to activate it though, you have to do a quick slide like this. So you have to turn super quick so that you see Banjo visibly slides, right? And when you do that, you have to push the B button at the right time. And you can see he can perform his quick claw attack. Right? So it's just kind of a weird little thing that developers, I guess, kind of forgot to put in. I guess there must have been like a special instance of being able to do this that they forgot to take out. But anyways, uh, that doesn't really add to much, it doesn't really do anything, so let's just keep going. Listen up, I'm Bottles, the short-sighted mole. Well, I'm Kazooie. Well, this here's my buddy Kaz Kazooie. <laughs> Banjo, and I'm just, whatever. Sure is a look, strange looking buddy, Banjo, can it talk? Better than you can, Goggle Boy. What was all that noise about? And where's my sister Tootie? The ugly witch can tell the swoop down of the sky and grabbed her. Calm down, Yuki. We'll get her back. Where did she go? She flew up to her mountain lair. It's really dangerous, so you'll probably need some training before you go up there. Or say if you want me to teach you some basic moves, or B if you think you're already good enough. Okay, I'm gonna skip this. You bet we're good enough, Bottle Brain. Hmm, very well. I'll give you the basic moves. Meet me at the top of Spiral Mountain. He just gives us the moves. He just gives it to us. Okay, so... Here's the thing. Uh, the, the reason why I decided to skip that is because, one, it's just kind of long, tedious, and it just teaches you the basics. So you can jump, you can do a flutter jump, you can do a backflip, right? And, um, okay, so these are empty honeycomb pieces. Click six of us to increase your energy bar. Yeah, so we will be able to get, uh, take an extra hit if we collect six of them. And in Spiral Mountain, there are six of them, so we'll be able to increase it by one. But typically in each level, there's only two. And they're pretty hidden. You know, especially for people who have never played this game before. And even for people who have. I mean, like, I hadn't found all of them for a very long time. Oh, that's an extra life. Um, extra lives are kind of irrelevant in this game. And uh, you'll kind of see why when we get there. Alright. Here's swimming. Now, swimming in Banjo-Kazooie is a little bit... It's a little bit difficult. I find a lot of people complain about the swimming mechanic in this game. But, um... I think it's mostly because people forget you can do a little swim by pushing the A button. Right? And it helps you position yourself. So if you get into, like, a, a weird spot, you can just push and hold the A button. And, uh, you'll do a little swim to help kind of correct yourself. And then, like, B swims are more for... Uh, you know, going longer distances. Right, so holding Z and B makes you perform this move here. It is pretty much... Uh, it's a very, very seldom used move to the point where I feel like most people forget that you can do it. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it, it, there's only a few instances in the game where it's it's required. Mmm, I'm a sticky honey energy. Yeah, so that's just our life. Extra hit points there. And now that we've got all of the empty honeycomb pieces, we can just go up Spiral Mountain right now. Here's something too, uh, to move, like you can do B to roll, but in Banjo-Kazooie, uh, not in Banjo-Tooie, Banjo-Tooie they kind of made it a lot better. Oh, wow, okay. No! Okay. <laughs> Every other playthrough I did it, <laughs> not in this one. Oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll show it off. So in Banjo-Kazooie, if you push B, you see Banjo kind of like pauses at the end at the end of a roll, uh, you can kind of cancel that out by pushing the A button. By like, as soon as he's about to stop, you just push the A button, and it kind of gives you a little bit of speed there. So you ready to tackle the witch now? You're sure we are. Show us the road, Bottle Boil. Cross the bridge to enter Gintilda's lair. Look out for me inside. Good luck. It's... <laughs> I think a lot of people mention this. It's like you get this giant witch face coming out the side of this mountain and uh, you decide to build your house nearby it. Ah, oh, poor Tootie. This fine contraption, so I'm told, will make me young and Tootie old. Let me go, you fat egg. My brother will come and kick your butt. Rescue? <laughs> 
Rescue Hugh and Adair. There's many dangers in my lair. Hurry, Klungo. Press that switch. I'm tired of being an ugly witch. Can you tell how many times I've done this? <laughs> yes, Mistress Grunty. Power is on. Soon be ready. Banjo! Help! There he is! The fun begins! My tricks and traps and... We'll see who wins! Okay, so these are the infamous Jiggies right here. Uh, Jiggies are the main collectible of Banjo-Kazooie. There are 100 in total, and you need 94 of them in order to complete the game. So, it's pretty crazy. We'll go find a picture with a piece missing. Yeah, 94 to complete the game. That, that's crazy. And that means that you have to go into every level, no matter what, in order to collect them. And our first puzzle is going to be over here. To enter the world shown on the picture, you must fill in the missing spaces with the jigsaw pieces. I've got the first piece! A jigsaw piece, Goggle Boy. Great! We'll fill in the missing spaces on the picture. Press A if you don't want to use any of the- Or wait, what? Yeah, press A to use it. <laughs> That's it! The picture is complete! And the door to Mumbo's Mountain is open! That was... That was such an easy fit. The others might... may just test your wit. Yeah, so here's the first level. We're gonna be bombarded by a whole bunch of collectibles that we need to do. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Find my molehills and I'll explain. Yeah, so we gotta find his molehills to find uh, different moves. So this here is a Jinjo. What was there, like five of them? Yeah. imprisoned five of us Jinjos on each world. Free us all to get a Jiggy. Yep. So we just gotta find those five Jinjos and they get a Jiggy. Alright, so that's a Mumbo token. We need five of them to access the first transformation in this world. We just gotta find Mumbo's hut and we can transform after we have five. Okay, these are notes. There are 100 notes in each world. And, um, it's kind of the main reason why I decided I was gonna play the original... Uh, Banjo-Kazooie cartridge rather than play the Xbox Live Arcade version um, Which I know from I think your guys's perspective It probably would have been a lot better to have played the Xbox Live Arcade version Because then we would have HD graphics and everything would look super clean um, Come on now There we go uh, And I, I really would have but there's one big difference and that is the notes. See, in the original game, the N64 version here, um, you're pretty much setting a note score, so you're not technically... Yeah, yeah. You're technically not selecting... Or you're not actually collecting... Hold on, I'll explain this in a bit here. <laughs> a lot of things happening. Okay, this is Chimpy! Oh! Chimpy Lake on this orange! Chimpy help Fat Bear and Bird! Yeah, so that's our resident monkey of the game. <laughs> we're gonna have to spotlight Chimpy later. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we're gonna learn about eggs. I'll try to explain the, the note situation a little bit after here. Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. I'm listening, little breath. Hold Zen, then push this top C button to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Oh, sounds cool. Anything else? Sure. Push the bottom seat button and you could shoot them from your behind. Sure, sounds painful. I wish I never asked. Brain Brain can carry 100 eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use a control stick to aim while you are coaching. Exciting, huh? Oh, you've learned how to use eggs. Here's 50 to practice with. All right, we're going to practice some eggs. Shooting right here. I'm going to hit this poor innocent gorilla. Wow, okay, it landed and I still got hit? That's a bit weird. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me. I mean, technically I only need to shoot it once, but... No! Oh, uh, bear be conga. We give prize to bear. 
All right, so that's good. Uh, I'm gonna go over there later. I need a... And there's a, a switch that's over there and there's a mumbo token as well, but I'm gonna grab that in a little bit later. Okay, so for here's the note situation. Uh, in the original N64 version, this one, you don't technically collect the notes. You are sort of like cr making a note score. So when you leave the level and come back, these notes will reappear and you'll have to recollect them. That means if you collect 99 notes and you leave the level, you don't have, like, you can't just find that last note that you missed. You have to collect them all in one go, otherwise you won't get all 100 saved. Right? Talon, try it will help Kazooie tackle sleep slopes with ease. I say it was useful. How does she do it? Hold Z, then press the left C button. Continue to hold Z while moving Kazooie around with the control stick. Go practice. He's just gonna fill up our energy. And we can do this move now. We can go up steeper slopes. Yeah, but in the Xbox Live Arcade version, you actually collect the notes. It's not a note score, meaning that if you collect 99, leave the level, there's only going to be that one note you have to get. And that's what makes this game infinitely harder than, uh, than the Xbox Live Arcade version. Uh, but I, I do, do, I totally recommend the Xbox version as, as it's, um, it's much more accessible. It's more accessible just to, to get, probably cheaper than buying a, an actual Banjo-Kazooie cartridge as well. And not to mention, it's just like easier, it looks better, all that stuff. <laughs> but I, I wanted to give myself a challenge, put more stakes on. Okay, so we got a Mumbo token here. But here's the thing. So on this, on this slope here, uh, you can walk on it using the Talon Trot, but if I try his Banjo, I'm just gonna slide right off. And then, if we go to the next one, I can try to get up on that, but the Talon Trot doesn't work. And what the game wants you to do is turn into a Termite, so that's the mumbo transformation of this level. Um, you'll be able to turn into a Termite and be able to walk up here. But there is a little glitch, or an exploit I guess, that speedrunners use in order to get up here. And I'm going to show that off now. So you want to jump up here and then rapidly tap the B button to like do a roll or to do a, a claw swipe like that, right? And then you jump to the next one. Oh, hold on. Like, just keep tapping that B button. Goodness, a bit hard. Yeah, just like that. And you'll be able to walk up, no problem. Oh, shoot. There we go. Uh, it's also another thing to, to know is that it's so much easier if you're like doing it upwards. So you see I'm trying to position myself upwards so that Banjo would would roll up or like do a claw, uh, claw swipe up because if I do it from the side it doesn't quite work. So you want to do it kind of like, whoa, you want to do it upwards. Just like that and it's super easy once you get it. Just keep tapping that B button as fast as you can. Once you, uh, once you reach onto the ledge. There we go, we got a Jiggy that we couldn't have normally been able to get. <laughs> Whoop. There we go, let's go over here. And we're gonna learn a new move over here. I call this the Big Buster. Jump into the air and then press Z to send Kazooie slamming her down, down on the floor. Ah, oh, don't like the sound of that, Manjo! Get used to it, Nest Girl, you'll be using it a lot. Whoa, Manjo, there's nothing more I can teach you on this world. Yep, no more he can teach. Even though he teaches the uh, that Beak Buster move here, I don't know why, but when I was a kid, I literally had no idea that you could smash open these huts. We get some more eggs here. So, okay. Come on now. Get up. There's a Jinjo. Okay, Bottle is just telling us that we have enough notes to break the first note door. I'll kind of go into that a little bit. So yeah, um, 
you have to collect notes in order to get a very high note score, and if you do that, you'll be able to open up the note doors that we come across. Uh, but if we're going from world to world collecting all 100 notes, we don't have to worry about uh, not being able to break doors. Oh, shit. We're just gonna shoot eggs in these guys' mouth. But here's the thing, here's a trick. You can't shoot the last one. Don't shoot the last one until you collect the empty honeycomb piece up here. Because otherwise you can't grab it. It's this little trick that this game put in here. Okay. So we're almost done. The only thing we need to do left is collect notes. There's another empty honeycomb piece, and then there's a Jinjo that's on the other side of the mountain that we're going to go to soon. And of course we're going to turn into the termite as well, I want to show that off. So there's two Jiggies that you need to get with the termite, and uh, for speedrunners they don't actually need to turn into the termite, you can actually save those mumbo tokens for later, later if you want, because uh... You can get the jiggy, the two jiggies that you would normally get with the termite without them. Which is kind of crazy. But I'm going to show off the next trick as well. So. Those people are interested in that. Oh. Here's the thing too, it's like if you're ever missing three notes, it's probably one of these. <laughs> that always happens to me. Ooh. There we go. And we should be... Okay, four and six. Okay, yeah, we're good. Uh, I would say the most important things to collect when you're completing a world are the... are the notes. So, like, if you don't collect all of the jiggies, that's really no big deal. That's really no big deal because, like... With notes, especially in the N64 version, it's like you want to make sure you get all of them. Because if you don't, then you'll have to redo basically the whole level over again, and that sucks. Alright, so we gotta transform into a termite. And then we can get the remaining things. Yeah, I really like Mumbo's Mountain as a level. It's like everything is really close by. Really fun to explore through. There we go. And we're gonna be missing six, and they're gonna be under the water. You've probably seen it before. Me Mumbo, best shaman in all game, can help Banjo and Filthy Feather Bun. Wow, shit, hot spoil. Hot spoil. <laughs> Mumbo's magic tokens hidden by witch. Find tokens and Mumbo help you. Ah, Banjo has plenty tokens. Stand on skull and press B to see mighty Mumbo magic. There we go. Now in most levels, Mumbo uh, has a lot of like hidden stuff on top of his skull, or inside the skull at the top. Yeah. See, as you can see, we have eggs up there, but he usually hides like some really, really good stuff up there sometimes. Like it could be notes, Jinjos, empty honeycomb pieces. So it's always good to look up there just in case you might be missing something. Okay. Got empty honeycomb piece here. And then we have six notes. I usually always like to turn into the, the termite to get these notes rather than swim, considering that you could just walk on the bottom of the water. And as we can see, look here. Mumbo's Mountain is complete. It's all done. And... If you leave the level... Oh. Reggie's magic stops you from taking the notes off the world, but the 100 you just collected will be your next best note score. Try to get 100 in each world as they're needed to open the note doors. Yeah, so if I go back in here, we'll see that the notes are have returned. And it that's what makes this game, like, ridiculously hard. Uh, to the point where people would get... Like, see, the, the notes are over there. On the bridge. Um... 
It gets to the point where people can probably get up to a certain point in the game, pretty much right before the final boss, and not be able to complete the game because, you know, they may not have enough notes, or, you know, like, they have to complete, you know, basically go back in and collect all the notes again, which really sucks. Oh, my magic get weak. Animal turn back or magic go. Magic all gone. Must go back to Baron Bird now. Yeah, so, I don't... This is one of the best things about about it is that you can't leave a, a certain distance from the level without turning back into Banjo and Kazooie, which is great because you can just leave as the animal and you don't have to return back to um, to Mumbo. Okay, so as we've seen, I was able to get the Jiggy that was up on top of here with the Termite, but this is kind of how speedrunners get the Jiggy. Uh, something very similar like that. So what you want to do is like constantly tap the A button and get as far as you can. And as soon as you get as far as you can, you can just uh, <laughs> just do that. Yeah, constantly tap the A button, get as far as you can. B to roll. And then once you're at the end of your roll, jump again and then do a, a beat buster, ground pound. And then that'll give you just enough distance to make it to the top. So that's a really good speedrunning tactic. And if you do both of those... Uh, both of those kind of exploits, you won't even need to turn into the Termite. And you can save those five Mumbo tokens for later if you want them. Which is good. This is the note door, sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful magic of musical spells. Open it up, then, Jam Jars! It's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? The number on the door is the strength of the spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the world must be at least this to bring Krenti's magic. Yeah, so we see 50 on here. We have 100. We're good to go. <laughs> Alright, we got a couple of things here. That door was easy you got past. Unfortunately, you're first and last. Yeah, I don't think so. So, this is Brentilda. Hello there, young ones. I'm Brentilda, Brentilda's nicer sister. I've crept down here to help you defeat the old hag. It's about time she was taught a lesson. I know of all Grunty's disgusting secrets, and I'll tell you three of them every time you find me. Remember them well, young ones, as they will help you avoid a fiery fate. Press B if you'd like to hear them. Okay, so Brentilda's gonna give us the dirt on Grunty, which is uh, some pretty important details that we may need later on. So, I'm just going to write them down. <laughs> Grunty brushes her hair with rot her rotten teeth with moldy cheese flavored toothpaste. Moldy cheese flavored toothpaste. Hey. She also washes her hair with rancid milk. Rancid milk. Oh. There we go. And she gets her clothes from the witch's warehouse. There we go. Moldy cheese flavored toothpaste, rancid milk, and the witch's warehouse. And that's going to come in handy later on. To remove pieces that you have already put down, press the down C button. But once the picture is complete, all the pieces are stuck there permanently. Yeah. Models is going to give us some info about how we can place Jiggies in the, in the puzzles, but it's just like, just throw them in there. We got enough. We're good. We don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah, pretty much what you want to do is if you find a puzzle, like, just complete it as soon as you can. Especially if you're going for 100%, you're going to be fine. You've activated a magic cauldron. Find two the same color and create a shortcut. Yeah, so we'll find shortcuts later on in the game to help us kind of traverse the lair. And, um, you know, one thing that I definitely want to mention is that Grunty's lair is easily one of my most favorite hub worlds in all of games. I love this lair. I love the design. I love the grungy and dirtiness of it. And uh, to me, it kind of evokes this feeling of being in a place where you're not supposed to be. And I love that. And also kind of something I feel like has been lost with time is like the dirtiness of the graphics. Like if you look at any kind of HD, like you know, 4K HD graphic games that we have today, it's... And they're trying to be scary, like, even, like, something like Resident Evil or something like that, Resi like, the Resident Evil remakes. It's like, the environments don't look 
scary, right? It's either it's like, oh, it's like a bunch of blood and gore or whatever, but like that's not creepy. When you look at these graphics and you look at like the darkness that you find in each of the corners or like how the graphics, you can't quite grasp what these graphics are, are, are trying to say here. Like, look, there's this weird, it, to me, it always looked like a snake. It has like this snake-like face to it. It's got these eyes. He's got these creepy looking things here. And it's like your brain is trying to process them. Like, what the hell is that? And it's like this uncertainty that's being created because it's not clear enough, right? It's just so dirty and unclean. <laughs> but I love that. I love that. And you can see that in games like Donkey Kong Country, uh, especially in like Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy, Kong, Diddy Kong's Quest. Like it's super dark and it's, it's kind of creepy and unsettling. And I love it. And I just feel like modern games just don't have that aspect into them ending anymore. I'd love to see if a game could try to replicate it. Oh, hi there! This be Treasure Trove Cove. There be two new moves for you to find. Here we go, we got Jinjo. And as you can hear from the creepy music, there was a shark behind me, but no big deal. He's good to go. Hey, this Nipper's Beach. You find nothing without Nipper's help. Almost done, Crustacean Brother. Cheeky bird need feathers clipping. Or that just try it, Chow Hub. I find the easiest way to beat this boss is to just kind of go in there. I see some people try to throw in eggs, and I just don't really think that's as effective. I could be wrong, though. But I've never really tried too much. That. Super little easy, small little boss in this game. Yeah, the uh, the winning conditions for this game are, are pretty crazy. Okay, I'm gonna show off something here. So we have these crabs, and if I hit these crabs by like rolling into it, you see that it drops one health, right? But if I do a ground pound, you can see it actually drops two health. So, there are certain enemies in this game, if you defeat them a certain way, they'll actually drop more health. And also, enemies don't respawn, so it's kind of a good idea to kind of go through and maybe kill all the enemies that you can if you ever come across them. And you can leave their health on the ground, because it, it wasn't- it won't despawn. So you'll be good. It's just a little tip. We're gonna go around here and be a mumbo token. There we go. And then we have an empty honeycomb piece over here. Now, if I go in the water in Treasure Trove Cove, that sh that shark will appear. So if I stay close, but if I stay close to the edge here and just kind of like hug it, the shark won't spawn. Oh, <laughs> I feel like up to a certain point. <laughs> but here's the thing, don't panic because the shark will take one hit, then kind of go off a little bit and then he'll try to come back to you, but by the time he comes back, it's like you're already long gone. So just kind of keep that in mind. And look, we're already back to full. We're good. We got some more notes up here. We well, see a little hippo captain over there, Captain Blubbers. Uh, he doesn't have his gold. He lost it in, I guess, this little shipwreck that he's gotten himself into. So we're going to go get his gold for him. So yeah, tight spots like this, unless you know how to maneuver like I do with the B button, it's always best to kind of like blow yourself down with the A button. Do some little little spins. There we go. We're gonna go, oh, there's a tree. It's got some more notes here. Come on. Oh, come on now. There we go. And we're gonna do the rest of this ship. This is like the big thing in this game right here. This is your big chance, chicken legs. It's time for you to fly. At last, it better be easy, bug owls. Simple enough even for you, beard brain. Just stand on a flying disc and press A. Here's 25 red feathers to help you into the air. See you. Yeah, you can fly using the flight pad. It's like one of the big things 
uh, that was advertised about this game is the fact that, you know, you're a bear and a bird and you can fly. It's kind of a, a funny little thing that they have here. And I, I that's what really draw, drew me into the game too, is like this idea that there's a bear and a bird <laughs> working together as this duo and it just works so well. I love it. So yeah, kind of, uh, kind of go over a little bit of the swimming. If you want to maneuver a little bit, you push the A button to do a little swim. And then the B button to do big swims, right? And you can also, if you're doing a big, you know, pressing the B button, you can also sort of like cancel it out by pushing the A button. So it's like, that's a full big swim. But if I want to do like a cutoff, right? I could just push the A button and it'll kind of like cancel it. So that way you can have a little bit more maneuverability. Because I, I know that it seems a lot of people have issues with the swimming in this game. So. That's something to kind of help it out a little bit. No, I don't want to... Fine, okay, it's gold. There we go, dingus. Be treasure! Thank you, VRDs! Take this reward! I'm off to spin, spin, spin! Wow, oh, gold for gold. There's a mumbo token here. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna learn our second move just up here. Ignore that island, you didn't see that. <laughs> you reach new heights with my shock spring jump. Let's get to the way do it. My legs are tired. Don't worry, the chicken does all the work. Simply stand on a shock jump disc and press and hold A. Nice going, you've learned all the cove's new moves. Yeah, we stand on here. You'll be able to jump up really high. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to do this. He just wants us to fill up his, uh... Head. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. He wants eggs. Okay. And that's kind of a trick you can do. You don't have to keep standing on the shock spring jump. Shock jump pad or whatever. Uh, you can, like, jump off of it. Uh, to kind of gain a little bit more distance. Let me get these two. Uh, there's four notes here. And we got a little mini game here where we have to spell out Banjo Kazooie. Where is the K? I always forget where the. Yeah, it's right here. The K is kind of hidden. The A. Z. There's another O over here. I and E. We gotta take care of this jerk. He's got a lot of health. He's a little bit harder to defeat. This is weird. He's got a little health that's stuck on the grate. There we go. This is also a very special room, as we'll be utilizing it later on for uh, little special extras that you can do. But I won't give the game away quite yet. On that. All right, since we're already here, let's just do this. <laughs> There's a quite a quite of a lore dump that's coming soon, so I might as well just show it off as we go through the game. All right, so this is a very hear that music. Okay, remember that music, because every time that's heard, you're in a special area. Okay, let me just get to the top and I'll relay the whole info dump here. We gotta go around and around and around. I guess I can explain a little bit as I go. So, Rare wanted to implement... Rareware wanted to implement a... A really interesting system where you'd be able to take save data from one game to another game, specifically Banjo-Kazooie to Banjo-Tooie. And so they came up with this concept called Stop and Swap, where you find special items in Banjo-Kazooie and you'd be able to bring them over to Banjo-Tooie by doing a certain thing, right? So at the very top of this here, you would actually find an egg. And let me just show you them right now. So these are the Stop and Swap items. We have a whole bunch of eggs, six eggs and one ice key. Right, and at the top of this particular, in this particular area, would be that pink egg, right? Now, 
What they wanted to do is have it so that you would collect these items, and I would assume you would probably go into a certain room in Banjo-Kazooie where you would activate uh, the stop and swap thing to happen. Um, so what, how it would work was, is that you would like kind of activate it, be like, you know, switch to Banjo-Kazooie or Banjo-Tooie cartridge now or whatever, and you would turn off the system, swap out the game to Banjo-Tooie, and then turn it back on, and then you would be able to access the items that you've collected in Banjo-Kazooie in Banjo-Tooie. The thing is, when they kind of proposed this idea to Nintendo, Nintendo rejected it because initially it was going to say, like, when you turn off the game, it would save some of the data on the, on the, on the system, in the system for like five or ten seconds or something like that. It, it wasn't a very long time. Um, and they, you know, Rare saw that and was like, oh, we could use that to, you know, save data from one game to another. But then Nintendo was like, they kind of changed the system so that it no longer was like five to ten seconds. It was like one, two, three seconds or something like that. And they were afraid that if people were to do this, they could damage their cartridge. So the idea was completely scrapped and they kind of came up with another way to do it in Banjo-Tooie. So the items are in Banjo-Tooie. It's just uh, through a different method. And when we end up playing Banjo-Tooie, I can show that off, probably. Uh, although I might play the Xbox Live Arcade version, which actually has it intact. So if you have the Xbox Live Arcade version, Stop and Swap completely works, right? So you'd be able to collect the eggs here. And then if you also have Banjo-Tooie, it has that save data on, a hard, on your hard drive saying, hey, you've collected it in one game. And you'd be able to access the, the prizes and stuff like that in Banjo-Tooie. So... It's kind of an extra little thing. Uh, there was a whole community that was based on trying to figure out what Stop and Swap was and how would it all works and stuff like that. And you know, it was it was a good time. <laughs> it was a really good time. I'll probably go into into them a little bit later, but uh, it was it was fun. Okay. Yeah, Stop and Swap is such an interesting concept. Uh, like years and years later, people are wondering like, what is Stop and Swap? What is this? <laughs> And, uh, this is really funny. Especially because, like, you find out about the stop and swap items in-game. You know, some of them are actually visible normally. Because, like, in a normal playthrough on the N64 version, that Shark Tooth Island, that's, that's what it's called, uh, wouldn't normally be raised. You actually have to enter a code in order for it to be raised. Oh shoot, I forgot the Jinjo! Can I make it? That's fine, I can get the Jinjo later. Some notes in here. Yeah, all the uh, Stop and Swap items are completely inaccessible. You have to enter a code in order to access them. Uh, and it was like years and years before people- Oh shoot, I did forget about something. I have to get this. I always forget about this. Yeah, for years and years, people didn't even know about the codes to, to access it until, like, it was found out through the code, I guess. Yeah, we have this empty honeycomb piece that's, like, super hidden because of the draw distance. Like, you wouldn't think to go there because, like, you're on the beach here and it's gone, right? You're not noticing that. I, I hate that. I always forget about that one. Yeah, there's actually a lot of really interesting data that's in Banjo-Kazooie that the developers left in there. Like, songs that aren't used, like completely unused songs are found in this game. Um, sound effects, that kind of stuff. It's really cool. To fly higher, you need some red feathers. Press A to use one. But remember that Beaky can only carry 50 of them. He also mentioned, uh, he doesn't mention this, and I'll probably have to show this off later, but you can press the R button in order to do, like, super tight turns. Like, B Bottles completely forgot to mention that. I do think that they updated the text in the Xbox Live Arcade version to mention that, so... Whatever button that's assigned to. Terrible at getting these. It's like weirdly off. Ah, no! There. 
we want to go in here because there's two mumbo tokens in here. I think in Treasure Trove Cove, there's only like three chests that you really want to go into. So you don't have to hop into all of them that you see. Because most of them just contain like eggs and feathers and all that kind of junk. There we go. We got a Jinjo over here. There's nothing over here. There's some notes over here. Oh, shoot. Get my health back. I can grab them. Now we're gonna go down here. There's a mumbo token. Yeah, you don't always have to try to get all of the feathers and eggs and stuff because there's just so many around. The game just gives you a whole bunch. You don't really have to worry about that. So these X's, uh, I'm hitting all the X's and they're appearing into the next spot. And we're leading to like a treasure that we can grab. We can get all these notes here. Otherwise, I would be flying. I'm just, I want to get all these notes that are up here. Because I left them because I knew I'd be coming around this area. There we go. We're going to go hit this light pad here. And that's why I wasn't worried, because we're going to go up on top of this thing. Actually, we're going to get the Jinjo and jump up on top. I think we'll do that instead. Okay. I'll take care of this guy. All these notes. Sometimes I tend to fall off this platform because the notes are so close to the side. Here we go. I've almost got all these things. It has a question mark, but like, the X is right here, so... Just gotta wait a little bit before we can actually attack it. There we go. And we finally have our next Jiggy. Yeah, so we're almost very, very close to the end of this game here. Or not <laughs> end of the game, end of the level. <laughs> It's quite a fast level, especially when you have a, a pattern. Like you know where you're... Everything's all planned out. Now this thing is actually really strange to me because... It's like, specifically Grunty's Jiggy, I found that to be very strange. There we go. That golden treasure works for me! The harder still the game will be! I just find it so weird that Grunty is like that specific Jiggy out of the entire game he calls you out on and saying like, hey, that one's mine. <laughs> I found it's kind of weird. Okay, so if you're forgotten one note and you can't find it, that's probably your note that you missed. It's a very tricky note that they just put there. Okay. Where's the last Jinjo? It's actually kind of funny because in the in some beta footage that I saw of Banjo Kazooie, uh, whenever you grab a Jiggy, it used to do a, a different kind of animation where it would have Banjo and he'd like run around in a circle, and then he'd throw the Jiggy up in the air, and then Kazooie would catch it, and eat it. But uh, I guess they had to take that out because if I were to grab that Jinjo and that Jiggy, Banjo would have like walked right off the side and probably died. <laughs> it was a good idea they got rid of it. Though I still think that, like even though I do like the little fanfare that they do for grabbing the Jiggy uh, in this game now, I do really like... I, I kind of do prefer how they did it in Banjo-Tooie where you grab it and then you just... Like, it just kind of floats above your head, and then you can just keep playing. Like, there's no in-between. There's no little animation like this. Alright, so this is one of the areas that I could die. I'm hoping to do a no-death uh, no run, if possible. Uh, where the hell is the... Okay, that's... 
Come on, come on. All right, let's go down here. Here we go. Yeah, sometimes I jumped off there and I die. My very first uh, full playthrough, I actually did die there. <laughs> but it's, it's fine, we're good. Actually, let's just check just in case. Yep, we're good. We got everything, we're good to go. Come on now. Here we go. Back to Grunty's lair. It's actually kind of funny because uh, I always think that those Gruntlings, whenever I see them, because in the game over cutscene, which I'll show later on, uh, 2D turns into something very similar to these Gruntlings. So I kind of have like this headcanon that Grunty is constantly stealing the beauty of like all these girls. And when when he, when she's left, like when she's finished with them, she she just kind of lets them roam around her lair. And so like these are the victims of like these used to be all like beautiful girls that got their beauty sucked from them. <laughs> Those poor unfortunate souls. This cauldron is actually super important as it takes you the furthest in the game. So we'll be activating the second cauldron when we get to the very last level of the game. Oh, actually we forgot something. We got to activate the next world. I always kind of wonder if there was a way to like jump across without having to activate the shock spring jump. I wonder if there are some speedrun strats that allow you to do that. Get up. Files has basically just told me that you can push the Z button to put in all of the jiggies so you won't have to do them in one at a time. Also, you can skip cutscenes like I, would, I just did if you push... I, I forget the exact combination, but I push A, B, Z, left and right on the N64 controller. And I'm not too sure if that still works in the Xbox Live Arcade version. Because uh, last time I tried it, I, I could never cut skip any cutscenes, so... But I was told that you could, so I, I'm really not sure. Okay, so we gotta hit a switch that's down here. That lets us get across, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna hit this switch. This stupid quest you should stop. You won't get me at the top. Cause you. Here we go around. Here's Brentilda again. We're gonna learn some facts. Brenty wears a reinforced girdle under that repulsive dress of hers. Reinforced. Girdle. Gross. She's also got this nasty pet dog whose name is Big Naka. Okay. My sister sings in her own band, Grunty and the Broomstick Boys. Grunty and the Broomstick Boys. That's good. All right. We got our three little fangs. Last thing, gotta hit that. And this is actually gonna help us unlock the next level. So if we wanted to, we can actually skip Clanker's Cavern that we had opened. And we can do this level if we want, but considering that in order to beat the game, even just a normal playthrough, without going 100%, you need to go on every level, so. I think you can actually keep the Jiggy, so I think Jiggies is fine. You probably don't need... I think you can probably skip, like, let's just say I wanted to not do the final level, which requires a whole bunch of Jiggies. I could probably save those Jiggies and finish the final puzzle piece and go to fight Grunty, but the thing is, you need 810 notes 
in order to open up the final note door. Meaning you have to go into every level at least once, because there's 900 notes in the game. You'd have to get that remaining 10. Which also means you can't save those notes, I mean, save those jiggies, which means that you can't, <laughs> you know. So you have to go into every level. Ah, shoot. I'm gonna see if I can get on top of this. Oh, come on now. Wow, okay, every time I've done this, I was able to get on top of it. Not this time. Whatever, it doesn't matter too much anyway. We're just gonna go up here. Okay, so there's these enemies that come out of the hole. You can, like, preemptively do a rat attack rap. And you can just knock them out super quick. Woo, gold feathers. Bam! Oh, come on. There we go. I'm not too sure if there's notes over here. No, there's not. Okay. So, when I was little, that basically was the whole area that I could find when I first came to this level. And I'm like, wait, that's not even close to all the notes. That's only one Jinjo. Like, what the hell am I missing, right? But, I don't know why the developers did this, it's so weird. But they have a pipe that you can swim through over here, right? Now picture this. Was it some four-year-old kid, right? And you find this pipe, and you're under the water, and it's dirty, and it's grimy, and it's kind of creepy, right? And you're, and you're- and it's late at night, too, actually. And you're swimming through the pipe, all inconspicuous. And then all of a sudden, you're face to face, with this thing. I mean, the camera isn't doing justice for it, but <laughs> it's the way that he's like opening his mouth up, it's so creepy. Damn you, Clanker! You creepy bastard. I think he has to greet you by opening his mouth up wide like that, it's so scary. Okay, so this is probably one of the harder parts in the entire game right here. So what you have to do is you have to swim underneath them and you have to free them by swimming through a key three times. But in addition to that, there's a whole bunch of notes and there's a Jinjo down here as well. You can see the Jinjos right there. I think I'm going to try to go grab them if I can. We'll just swim. In case we got the Jinjo. Um, there you go. So we're doing really good so far, actually. We got the Jinjo. We're going to get all the notes here real quick. Gonna swim around in a circle. Yeah, so there's that fish right there. His name's Gloop. And he's gonna give us some... He's gonna give us some air if we need it. And, uh, I'd say to really start panicking... Or not panicking, but... Yeah, panic when it's at one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, try to find some air when... When you're about three. Or if you just don't feel safe, try to, try, you know, try to get it whenever you can. Here we go. It's fine. And now we can do the key. Little swim, little swim. Back, back, back. There we go. Now, lucky during this cutscene, it doesn't count down your health, or your, uh, your air, so... You'll be good. I forget exactly how many air... Uh, how much air you need to get to back to the top. But... I think you'll be good like this. This is fine. I've got all the notes. If I don't have all the notes, then I, then I know that I missed them down here. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I have all the notes. Yeah, and here's the thing, too, is that um, if you get the Jiggy that just spawned on his back, you won't have to go through the key anymore. But if you do die, you will need to go back down there and get the Jinjo if you don't have that Jiggy already. Um, but if you do, then you just need to go get the notes. Oh, no. Clanker's got a 
toothache. Eating too much garbage. There we go. Okay, so for this we need to hit it, but make sure that you're like lined up straight. Okay, even when I was lined up straight, it still knocked me off to the side. Because you can get you can get knocked off if you if you hit that. And it, it may like knock you back to a spot where you're probably not gonna wanna be. Another mumbo token. Always good to have. Okay, let's go down here. Swim through this pipe. There's gonna be some mutant snippets. Ooh, they're creepy. These guys got big eyes. You just have to kill them all. Round pound them. There you go. I hate these things. You can knock them down and hit them. They're just as strong as normal snippets, so it's not like they're very particularly hard. There we go. Get all the notes in here. Now this is a little bit weird as the... Because it's all top-down, it's kind of hard to see. But all the... Yep, okay. It's a little bit hard to see, but... Like this part, you could just walk underneath it. It's not actually right on the floor. You have to jump up to get to it. There we go. Need to go down here. I don't know if those mutant snippets were supposed to be scary or not, but I never found them to be scary. Okay, so I'm gonna go get a jiggy. I need to go into that pipe. It's on the side here. This is a very, very tricky jiggy to get if you're not comfortable with swimming. Alright, so it's a very, very long pipe. It's only one way. So that means to get back out, I have to go backwards. Right? And I really suggest getting this jiggy... Uh, the, make it the very last jiggy that you get. Right? And make sure to enter this pipe with full, full air. Because if you don't, you're... There's a good chance you could die, because even with full air, look, I'm already at three. I have to swim backwards. And I have to go back up as fast as I can. It's it's very dangerous, so I definitely recommend doing that section last. After you've collected all the notes at the very least. There's gonna be this pipe here, it's gonna be full of notes. I find it kind of annoying that they put a whole bunch of notes down here because, like, it's a bit, um, cryptic-ish. It's kind of harder to see. Okay, so next thing, eggs. So shooting eggs is kind of hard in this game because it doesn't really give you a really good idea as to where you're shooting. Because, like, there's no reticle and you're not able to, like, aim properly, I'd say. Uh, they kind of fixed- they definitely fixed this, actually, in Banjo-Tooie, where you actually have a reticle. You push the up-C button and you'll be able to, like, aim your eggs super easy. But in this game, not so much. Plus, the camera just does no favors. <laughs> oh, I guess this is a little bit better. Yeah, just fire one egg, see kind of where it sits, and then just start firing. Here you go. We got our Jiggy. Come on. Okay, we gotta spin around in circles. You can get those crabs if you want, but get some extra health if you need it. Yeah, Clanker is such a weird creature because, like, what's he supposed to be, right? Is he, like, I always thought that he was just, like, completely mechanical. And then you go on inside of him and he's all fleshy. And you, you can see all his guts and gore and all that stuff. It's like you're swimming in his blood. And it's like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> yeah, 
in some uh, early footage of Banjo Kazooie, you could see that Clanker was actually going to be like he wasn't going to be mechanical at all. He was just like a big whale. So that was kind of cool. Maybe it was just used as like a like a placeholder or something like that, but it was just kind of interesting that they uh, they went this route with them. <laughs> I mean, definitely memorable. Very creepy in the side of them. Okay, so there's more stuff to do inside of them, but I'm gonna wait a little bit. Um, because we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna take a different route to get in here, and we're gonna be able to hit, uh, hit a switch and all that kind of stuff, so... I'm just gonna go this way, and then pretty much go back in through a different entrance. Jinjiro! Go. Go up on top of them. Here's a bunch of notes I didn't grab earlier. And we're gonna stand on this bolt that he fires up into the air. Get these remaining notes. Wow, okay. <laughs> Every time something like that happens, I start panicking and start jumping. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't fall off. That's good. Ah, uh, whatever. Doesn't matter if I fall. We're actually able to jump up on his schnoz here. Gonna wait till he throws this thing back up. We can go inside. We see there's a witch switch here. The eyes! Okay, so for this section, we got these spinning blades, and you can kind of see where the blades are by, like, there's a black mark on the ground. You just kind of have to wait for the thing to go around. And then you can just kind of move through it. And there you go. You don't have to worry about getting hit. Good. There we go, now we can fly. And we're gonna go through that little opening we got here. There we go. Okay, so we come to this room. Do not try to brunt this. There is a molehill right here. I mention this because I myself have missed this molehill on my very first playthrough. I had no idea about it. It was the very last move I earned in the game because of this. This move is, uses Biko's wings as a shield against the bad guys. Oh, does it make me invulnerable? Sure does. Hold the Z button and press the right Z button. Whatever, yeah, push the buttons. Okay. Use it wisely, though, as this move requires gold feathers, and you can only carry ten of them. Here, take five valuable gold feathers with you. You've learned all my new moves in this world. The rest is up to you. Yep. So we got our Wonder Wing ability here. Makes us completely invulnerable. It is a very, very powerful move. You want to try to conserve as many gold feathers as you can. Uh, I would say it's the only collectible item between like gold feathers, red feathers, uh, yeah, gold feathers, red feathers, and eggs that you want to get. Kind of go out of your way to get a little bit. I didn't mean to click you. Yeah, you kind of want to go out of your way to get the gold feathers just in case because they're very valuable, they're very useful for a number of challenges, and you'll see that as we go through. Now we have another exit here. And uh, we do a little swim, do a little swim, adjust ourselves. Whoop, I got off course. You can like cancel that using the A button. And there you go. Okay, so next section. We got a few things. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do this first, and then... There's some pipes inside, uh, near the side of the wall that I want to go through. But we're going to do this first. We got some notes, some feathers, and eggs. Gold feathers. I love how they stack up on top of one another like this. It's pretty funny. There you go the extra life and uh, I'm gonna go down here and there should be a mumbo token in here 
Might as well try to get that. It's good to get. Every time you go up to a pipe or whatever, I think it's always best to try to get some air. Just in case something goes wrong. And through here, there's going to be a Jinjo. Oh, it's not the last one. Okay. Oh, I know where the last one is. Never mind. We're good. We're fine. I'm just going to swim all the way over there. We're going to have to go over here. Next. Actually, while we're under here, I guess. So here's that empty honeycomb piece. It's probably one of the most trickiest honeycomb pieces to get. It's like it's, it's super, super hidden. Ah. No! I didn't mean to do that. Go back up. There we go. We gotta wait till Clanker raises his flipper here. There we go. There's a left and right side. You wanna come over here. There's some notes. Yep, five left over. We're good. We're on pace. Whoa. Oh, come on, if I can... No! <laughs> if you're underneath something, um, when you're treading on top of the water, you can, like, the game will push you under it. Oh, obviously, in that instance. <laughs> okay, and this is the last Jinjo is in here. We're just gonna wait it out till we get the Jiggy. <laughs> right, Alan Trot here. Get these notes. You can try to slide down if you want, but it's kind of hard to get them all. And through here, we have the empty honeycomb piece. We got an extra hit. Okay, so let's look at the totals. We could see. We are done. On to the next world. Also something to mention, uh, if you're using a Game Shark code, you can actually activate uh, a menu item, which uh, is, it, it's, a, it's a selection that you can do in the menu. So just underneath uh, the Jiggy and, and Tootie. Yeah, so just underneath the Jiggy and Tootie, or maybe it might be between Banjo and the Chiggy. I, I'm not too sure, but whatever. There was an option to return to Witch's Lair, and it has a picture of Grunty on it. So that way you wouldn't actually need to go all the way back to the little starting area that we went to and go on the pad. I really wish that they kept this in the game because there's... Like, it just kind of sucks having to make this trek all the way back. It's not very fun. There we go. Especially this one, it's such an awkward spot. <laughs> well, your best note score for this world is now 100. Well, yeah. My next world is the hardest yet. And you will fail. <laughs> and you will fail, <laughs> that's it. All right, we need to get, uh... We need to get some, we need to smack her eyes in. There we go. Bam. Bam. Ah, oh, I wasn't in the right position. Oh well. I was hoping to be like right where the Jiggy spawned so I can grab it a little quicker, but not that it really matters. <laughs> okay. I think we're making some pretty good progress so far. Go hook. <laughs> okay. Of how there's all these big giant grunty faces through this whole air. All these big statues and stuff. She's super narcissistic. Okay, so we want to go through this pipe here. We see Bruntilde again. My fat old sister's favorite sport is loogie flicking. Ooh, gross. Oh, Loogie licking. 
What else you got? Although she's dim, she attended St. Dunbell's School. St. Dunbell's School. You won't believe that Gruntilda's party trick is eating a bucket of beans. <laughs> you know, Grunty, when she breaks out that big bucket of beans, the party really starts jumping. Woo! Get it? Jumping beans? Get it? Whatever. Okay, so we are gonna go into the swamp. And... Well, let's just wait. Keep your eyes open for your next move, big face! Yeah, he's just right here. <laughs> These are the wading boots. Chicken Legs wears them so you can safely wade through dangerous areas like the swamp for a limited time. Okay, chicken. Or, uh, Kazooie. Let's go grab the pair. Great, now you know all the swamp's new moves. Yep. And we're just gonna leave. Uh, I have to do something before we actually start the level. Because we're gonna need the transformation to access a certain area. Let me see if I can take as little damage as possible. That's eh, fine, I guess. Eh, two hits is okay. Yeah, this is where we can get our next uh, puzzle done. And that's Freeze Easy Peak. It's my favorite level in the whole game. And uh, we'll be doing that next after the one uh, that we're doing here. Bubble Goose Swamp. Okay, so now... As I kind of mentioned about before, like we see all these weird things on the walls and you can't quite know what they're making out. So if we look over here, like clearly this is a snowman, right? But if we look at this guy, doesn't he kind of look like a gorilla with two big bo boxing gloves? Like it's so weird. Like he likes like one big boxing glove. Or two big boxing gloves, and he's got these big arms. Anyway. Got, like, a big long head. Alright. Yeah, so this is a big reason why we have to get here early. Before the transformation, because we can't fit through here. We gotta have a transformation to get through. But we have to break that before we get there. Hootie's fate is looking grim. It's because her brother is dim. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, and because I got the wade boots, you don't need the wade boots. I could have just went in here on my own without coming back out, but I figure because it's like super quick, I'll be able to save some health. Well, it, it probably would be better just to go. <laughs> but you could end up losing a lot of health that way. Okay. Damn, practice like that. Me white yummy eggs too. Yeah, we're just gonna shoot a whole bunch of eggs in those crocodiles' mouths. They're gonna. Oh wait, I don't want this. I don't want this. Get out of here. Yeah, you can push B to cancel. Okay. We're just gonna ignore that. We're gonna keep going. And we're gonna go over here. Yeah, these frogs are very annoying because when they're, like, in the sitting position, you tend to, like, jump over them, and that's just annoying. I'm gonna take the waiting boots, because there's a bunch of notes over here. For the longest time, I didn't even know that there were some boots over here. <laughs> I always just, like, jumped at the notes my myself, trying to grab them. Took some damage. I don't really care for that life. We're just hitting the X mark on this egg. And this is like one of the few instances where this move actually comes in handy. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, come on, really? There you go. Oh. And save some damage. There we go. I wonder what the hell these things are. At first I was thinking they're like mushrooms. But I think they might be like those reed things. Like they have like... 
what are they called? Like, they're like hot dogs. They're kind of like the brown hot dog thing or whatever. I forget what they're <laughs> Okay. So in addition to getting that note that's up there, we also need to... Or not note, that jiggy. We need to get a bunch of notes. It's kind of like a number of tasks that we need to do. Here we go. And that crocodile is kind of like laying out our, our groundwork of where we're going to be going next. Because we want to kind of follow him around the entire world. And do the tasks that are near him. Jiggy and Ginger. Okay. Got the notes. Got the Jiggy. Ow. Yeah, so these guys are just gonna come after us. I typically like to use the Wonder Wing here, as um, it can make like super, super quick work of them. There we go. Yeah, you won't have to worry about them, but every time you use those gold feathers, you have to remember to replenish them whenever you can because like there are, are, are a number of spots during the game that they really come in handy and that was one of them for me it was it's probably one of the least important areas to use the gold feathers for it but it kind of makes it a little quicker get some notes gonna hit the switch switch go. Gonna jump up here. Now you could shoot an egg from across if you want, but it's kind of hard and you want to get that mumbo token, right? There we go. We got our jiggy. Like Bubble Goop Swamp, it's kind of one of those levels that I, I, I kind of almost dread in certain ways because there's like two jiggy sort of mini games that you have to do that, that makes me super, super nervous doing. Uh, one of them is inside of this crocodile that we have here. Uh, I, I get really nervous doing this mini game, and you'll see when I when I show it off. But uh, it's not nice. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we'll be going to that turtle next. Come on, really? We go up here, because there's some... Well, that one's kind of irrelevant, but... I really don't want to take any more damage! Because I'm going to have to eat some damage getting those notes over there, so... Oh, shoot. This is another gold feather. Come on, get him! I want the... I want the health. We got a Jinjo up here. I'm hoping to take two points of damage by doing all of this. I think, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't mind eating damage sometimes get things a little bit earlier, a little bit more quicker. Because, like, otherwise I'd have to use the transformation to go get those notes, and I don't want to go over there to do that. Alright, so now we're gonna go into the turtle. Now we have to, uh... We have to hit this guy's, uh, legs. Because he's a masochist, and he loves the pain. Oh, there we go. We got them all? No, no problem. And there is a Jinjo over here.
There we go. Did I say you could speak? No speaking. He likes it. Okay. Maybe some notes. Yeah, this minigame here, uh, you know, for people who like the game Simon. Okay, I guess I just won't do it then. <laughs> I want to get these notes first, actually. Quiet, please. The famous Tip Top Choir will now perform my latest work. Yellow, red, yellow. It's short, isn't it, Shellboy? We will see. Copy what you have just heard for lesson one. Yeah, so this is just basically Simon. Oh, wow. <laughs> Already starting off pretty bad. Hmm, not too bad. Try lesson two. Pink, yellow, pink, purple. Okay, pink, yellow, pink, purple. Pink, yellow, pink, purple, cyan, cyan. There we go. Ah, man. Sim Splendid, you need just one more lesson. Here's the hard part. Pink, blue, yellow, purple, pink, blue. <sighs> oh, come on, do the thing. It's like the more the time passes, the more harder it gets. Ah. Magnificent, a true masterpiece. Tag this trinket I found earlier. Yeah, so for those people who don't know, uh, this is Tip Top, who was introduced in Diddy Kong Racing. And so Tip Top makes, uh, Typically makes a number of cameo appearances in Banjo Kazooie games. Fortunately, he doesn't have his own game, but it's whatever. Yep. So we have an empty honeycomb piece, and then we're good in here. Got all the notes. Did that pin in the ass mini game? Sometimes the the combinations can be like really crazy. Oh. Let's get some health. Alright, let's get to going. Yeah, every time I see Double Boop Swamp, I'm just like, ah oh, man, I don't want to do this level, this level sucks, but... While I'm in it, I'm kind of like, you know what, this is alright. This is okay. I can deal. This is probably the most annoying part of the entire... of the entire stage right here. Is that every time you want to do the transformation, you have to go through this stupid maze. And every time you want to, like, leave as Banjo-Kazooie, you have to go through the stupid maze. For the most part, anyway. But you can leave and go as the crocodile- I- I- I screwed it up, oh no! I- I spoiled what it was! I mean, cr crocodile- no, that's not right. It's, uh, it's not crocodile. Okay, here's a Jiggy that's a pain in the ass. Okay, because the camera doesn't want to help me here. Okay. Come on, can you can you work with me? Fine, I'll just go for it then. No! <laughs> I was dicking around too much. It's so much easier going forward because the camera isn't like stopping me. Or back to the beginning, whatever. Okay. Yeah, just kind of... <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is you want to make sure... Like, you have to keep an eye on your shadow, right? And that's kind of uh, 
a must for pretty much all platformers. Always keep an eye on your shadow whenever you're jumping, and you'll be able to position yourself pretty well. He has chosen death. Okay, we should have enough mumbo tokens. I think you only need like 10. Yeah, 10. Um, so mumbo's hiding a few things here. We have a some feathers, which we don't need. And we have an empty honeycomb piece, and he's also hiding a mumbo token right behind him. See, it's not a crocodile, it's an alligator. <laughs> okay, it's probably a crocodile, but whatever. Okay, with the crocodile, we can have access to a number of... Well, it's mainly like two main things you can do. I guess three. So you can go and try to collect the notes that are in the water. Um, I already collected them all as Banjo and just took the damage. But there's one section that you can't do that, and this is the area I'm going into next. And before you do like the final mini game against that big crocodile, or well, inside of the crocodile, you want to make sure to collect all of the notes uh, because there's a chance that you could die, and it's just not very good if that happens. Yeah, there's a number of cool stuff under here. Mumbo tokens, gold feathers. Oh, there's only one. That sucks. There's some notes over here. It's kind of weird because even though the crocodile doesn't really do too much, he's probably one of my favorite transformations. Is it just the way he looks, I guess? He's kind of cute with his like, big beady eyes and he's wearing the backpack and... I don't know, it's funny. Alright, so let's go to the crocodile. There are a couple notes inside of the nostrils, so I think those are the remaining ones. If not, we're gonna have to look around, which I I'm pretty sure we got them all. I think we're good. Yep, three. There's three there. There's a mumbo token here. And we got all the notes, so if we die, we're good to go. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Oh my god, stupid Mr. Vile. I'm Mr. Vile, greedy as crack of all. Play my game to win a prize. Press A to accept or B to check it out. Game is simple. Eat more red yumblies than me. Ready? Three, two, one, and go. Yeah, so these things pop out of the ground. You gotta eat them up. And you gotta eat more than him. You can't tie him either. If you tie, you lose. This is probably one of the most annoying minigames in the entire game. Absolutely. Um... Also something to kind of remember, or know, is that at the very back you can see like some shoes they are kind of walking. Uh, there, It's a new move that we haven't unlocked yet, as it's as it comes out a little bit later. Um, thing is, it's probably best practice to get that move, then come back here, and then do it, because this minigame becomes like so much easier when you have the shoes, because he, he runs pretty quick. So I've got a little bit of a lead on him, but I'm, st I'm still not comfortable because he can just... He can just really come back real quick. Like, it doesn't take that much. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. We're fine. Okay, so that's minigame one. We have two more to go. Err, you only win easy game. Now we'll play harder game. Eat reds and avug yellow grumblies, as they're not right. Yeah, so we just have to eat the red ones, we gotta avoid the yellow ones. It just takes so long for me to move to where I need to go. And it's just annoying. And plus you're trying to like anticipate where they're going to appear. It's such a random game, sometimes I'd be able to like beat them by like a whole bunch. Like kind of in the last one I did that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to go over there quite yet. But... Whoa. This sucks. See, like, they start appearing where he is, and that's what... 
makes it so hard. Kind of random. Ooh. Yeah, don't count them out yet. Okay, we're good. Okay. Woo! Ah, lucky greenie wins. Must play last game. Only eat what is shown at the top of the screen. Ready, three, two, one. Go. Ugh. This is the one that really is hard. Because I feel like he moves a lot faster. And there are times where you go to eat one of them, but then it switches over. And yeah, just like this. And it wastes a whole bunch of time. Um, it's also kind of good to preemptively, like... Like, even though it's on, like, the green ones or the red ones or whatever, you might want to, like, stand around a whole bunch of the next one. So, like, right now... Oh, they all just went away. <laughs> oh, they're kind of coming back. That's good. So, yeah, you kind of want to preemptively get them. Or, like, prepare for them. And you kind of want to try to stay around the middle as much as you can, too. Okay, I'm just going to try to concentrate here, because it's not out of the woods yet. <sighs> Get. <clears throat> I should have went for that one. I, I, I was thinking it was going to switch. Alright, take your stupid chew. Yeah, he does damage to you if you lose. Get over here. No, I didn't mean to... God damn it. Do the game. Do the game! <laughs> Alright, yes. Yeah, it's like the game just like throws him a bone or... <laughs> yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? There's literally nothing. I try to grab that, he's gonna... Oh my god, I'm doing terrible. Okay. The game does kind of have like a built-in system that allows you to like stay competitive for through the game, so... It's not like an entire loss, but... Ah, shit. No, don't grab it! Yeah, I'm doing pretty bad. Like... Oh, come on. Switch. Switch! <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, really? Come on, do the game! Please. Yes. I feel like this is- oh, come on, why? This is easily the most work I've had to do. My place didn't screw me over that time. Why does he always have to be right there? Oh, come on. I should have actually went wherever he was. Ah. Mm. Oh, gosh, it's always by one. Here it is! Uh, if I win this, then I get it, but... Uh, oh, please, don't let me lose. Like, uh, well, I still got it, but... Piss off, game, seriously. 
grab it. Just disappears as soon as I try to grab it. Can this game stop, please? I think whenever I feel like, oh man, I just grabbed the whole bunch. Please don't. Okay, thank you. Wow, that was super freaking close. Oh gosh. Mr. Vile never lost before. Greeny can have a prize. Yeah, I'm taking that stupid prize. I'm getting the hell out of here. Oof. Almost died. That was terrible. That was so bad. I feel like I rarely ever get get it that bad. That's what I mean, like, getting the... Getting the running shoes just helps so much. It's practically a non-issue if you get them. I just hate it how they, like, spawn, like... As soon as I need the yellow ones, well, all the yellow ones disappear. I think I'm gonna go grab some health here, I guess. Might as well. There we go. Ah, it's terrible. My time! No, I ruined it! Oh, right, we also have to get a special thing over here. Yep, so Bubble Gloop Swamp is done. Ah, I don't like game- I don't really like worlds that have mini games like this. Or it's like Simon and you know racing to collect a bunch of stuff. Ugh. Go through here and there's a little special thing here. Cheeto, the spell book you have found, magic cheats I have for you. Hey look, Brain, what did you say? You better not give my spells away! Which last book finders bear and bird are spell they get? I sure do, Bangladi. Come on, big book boy, give us the spells. Only one spell Cheeto can tell. Enter the code Blue Eggs on San Paso floor in Treasure Show of Cove World. Help you it will. Thanks, Mr. Cheeto. Hidden in lair or other spell books are them you should find. Yeah, there's two more spell books after this. Uh, it's kind of weird how he mentions it. Like there are other spell books, but they're all the same guy. So I'm. I'm not very sure, like maybe initially it was supposed to be like there's multiple Cheeto books, but in Banjo-Tooie there's only one, so. Alright. Yep, so we're going on to the next World Freeze Easy Peak. But before that, we get a little bit of downtime in Grunty's lair here. So that we can... Oh, Mumble magic disappearing. And it's gone. There we go. We can actually move quick. Woo! Yeah, there's a bunch of preparation we need to do before the next world, so... We got Bruntilda here. My lazy sister often sleeps in a dumpster. The only thing she ever won was the biggest butt competition. You know, I think... I think some people would actually love that. <laughs> Javelin boasts of appearing on the cover of Fathead Monkly, polishing her crystal ball. There we go. Polishing her crystal ball. Here we 
go. <laughs> Alright, next area. Yeah, another thing that kind of adds to Grunchies there being awesome is just like there's so many different rooms. So many different like motifs and stuff. With this area being all like ancient tomb stuff. There we go. Activate this shock spring jump. Pad. And it's gonna circle that. I've got this skirt, so when I'm thinner, it really makes me look a winner. Okay, so here's kind of a little exploit that you can do. So, just as we've seen in other worlds, there's a witch switch. We hit it, opens it up, and we're able to access a Jiggy in Grunty's lair. But you can actually get this Jiggy earlier by jumping on its on his uh, little arms here and uh, going to shoot an egg. And it like increases your hitbox, and you'll be able to back bypass through and get the Jiggy. So that's really cool. Uh, I learned that pretty much on my very first playthrough. Uh, it was a friend that taught me it. And... I never actually knew how to open a sarcophagus at all. I could never find the witch switch to do it. I mean... I think I did find it. Like, it, it is kind of obvious. It is in a spot where you could... Where you can see it if you get one particular Jiggy. But, uh... I never bothered trying to get it, I guess? <laughs> But uh, I'll be hitting the witch switch just to kind of show you where it is and the path to get to it. All right, so we got a Jiggy right there. And so the next level we're supposed to be doing is Freeze Easy Peak, but we are going to open up that note door and we're going to open up the n another stage, Gobi's Valley. And um, I think I mentioned this when we had the when I showed off this, the running sneakers with the, the crocodile. But, uh... You are able to... Yeah, so there's two stages that are, like, dependent on one another. And that is Freeze Easy Peak and Gobi's Valley. Uh, the move you get in Gobi's Valley, the running sneakers, are necessary to get a Jiggy and Freeze Easy Peak. So if you don't go into Gobi's Valley and get the running sneakers, you won't be able to get all of the Jiggies in Freeze Easy Peak, meaning you won't be able to complete it in one run. Um, but in Gobi's Valley, there is a move in Freeze Easy Peak that if you don't get that, you can't access a room that also has notes, right? So you want to get all the notes in one run. So to like, it, it's just impossible. So like, the best practice is to either go into one of the levels, learn that move, and, and leave, and that way you'd be able to complete the other world 100%. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to go into Gobi's Valley, learn the move, come out, and complete Freeze Easy Peak. So I can do that. Um, typically when I, when I used to play this game, without thinking of like better ways to get through it, I'd always just go into Freeze Easy Peak and then you know, complete that as much as I can, leave that last Jiggy, and then come into Gobi's Valley, and then go back into Freeze Easy Peak, but... I think this is just a lot easier to do. Go and get that, uh... Get the running shoes. We're just gonna pretty much ignore everything here for right now. We're gonna learn the running shoes, and then we're gonna go to Freeze Easy Peak. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. These are the running shoes. Beaky wears them on her scrawny feet to make her run really fast for a limited time. Ah, energy's low. You've learned all the moves I can teach you on this world now. There we go. Now we're just gonna leave. Leave real quick. Yeah, I think so far we're doing pretty good. I think we're doing pretty good for time. So far, of course, the levels are only going to get longer and harder, so... I guess I should have gotten those uh, running shoes, but whatever. Tank the damage! Must go fast. Must beat game quick.
There's a little bit more to do, but I'm just gonna go into Freeze Easy Peak. Jump, jump, jump. Okay, here we go. Freeze Easy Peak. The peach got another move waiting for you. If you can find it. Yeah, Freeze Easy Peak is easily my most favorite level in the game. Wait, where's our presents? Our daddy Boggy said he was fetching them and now he's been gone for ages. Wait! <laughs> Um, yeah, so we gotta go get some presents for these kids. But the thing is, is that, um, I don't think that the presents spawn unless you talk to them. So you have to talk to them, I think. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it goes. Okay. And then we have Boggy. He's right here. Ow, my stomach aches. I shouldn't have eaten that shiny thing. Someone help poor Boggy. Yeah, we'll help you later. <laughs> There's nothing you can do for him right now. Uh, yeah, I love Freeze Easy Peak. I love, like, the Christmas aesthetic that this game, that this level has. And, of course, the music. Where are the Twinklies? Protect us from Twinkly Munchers as we hop across our tree. If enough of us get there, we can light the tree for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the thing is, is uh, I want to kind of have it lined up. Oh, shoot. My timing's off. Now, now. Oh, wow, it's really bad. Yeah, you want to try to, like, defeat him before, like, in a line so that you can just kind of do this. But it's kind of hard to do. Stop it! I feel like my, uh... I think the pattern so far is pretty bad. Okay, I think I fixed it. Oh. Okay, that green one just needs to get across. Yeah, we got it. We're fine. I'm gonna run over here. Okay. Yeah, so we have to hit that switch. And it will uh, light up the tree. But we want to learn this move first. And this is actually the final move in the game. We won't have to talk to bottles anymore. Time for some aerial action with my devastating beak bomb attack. That's wrong, Gargles. Tell us more. When you're flying, press B to launch Kazooie at a target like a missile. Choose your targets carefully, though, as it costs red feathers each time you use it. Yeah, energy's low. Well played, Banjo. Now you've learned all the moves in the game. Yep. Now we're left our own devices. And uh, what I'm going to do is get some of these notes, then we're gonna run back to the switch and hit that. Then we're gonna have to run back here to get the flying pad. We have this stupid icicle guy that's like invisible-ish. Get rid of them. Yeah, I, I, I just in general, I love the music in this game. I mean, that's a big reason why Grant Kirk Hope is so renowned in the gaming space. Is he's, he's just got such amazing talent for music. I mean, he was the very, he was like one of the first games, uh, names in video games that I've ever learned uh, when I was uh, learning a whole bunch about Banjo-Kazooie and the history behind the games and such. Okay, so to kind of aim, you what you need to do is like where the backpack is, right? So kind of like line it up and, uh, you know, try to make it so it's straight, but also keep it to where the backpack is. And you will be able to make your shots very easily. All right, so we open that, but we're not going to get that quite yet because there's a few things I want to do. So one of the first things I want to do actually is to hit these buttons. Here we go. Here we go. And we got that jiggy, but we're still not going to get that jiggy yet. As we're going to do a few more things. We're going to have to knock the heads off these snowmen. Oh, wow. Okay, that was my, uh, my bad. 
We well, got a bunch of feathers here that we can get to replenish ourselves. It wasn't too bad a tumble. Okay, yeah, so right here. There we go. So yeah, the uh, the backpack is kind of our uh, radical, essentially. And we're just going to fly around and hit all these snowmen. See, right now. Okay, right now. It's so easy once you learn that little trick. But you also have to be, like, lined up for it as well. And we have a, a jiggy all the way up the top, so that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go all the way to the top. Because that's the only way you can get up there is by flying. It takes a lot of feathers to get up here, though. I mean, I think there might have been another a better way, because we're gonna have to climb up that scarf that we just saw later. Actually, it might have been... Yeah, it might be... No, I, I don't know. You have to come to go up and down. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the best way to take it is. It probably is best to, to leave this one a bit later, but I like to get it done now. Oh, we're at the back of the snowman. We want to go into the front. There's a little hole here. Maybe we can get a present. And there's a G in here. There we go. And, uh, you know what? I think we're just gonna go. Because <laughs> we're gonna come back up here anyways later. Oh! That's better. Hey, you found my sled. I'll go and practice for the big race now. See you, buddy. But Boggy, your kids! Your kids! Your presents for your kids! Uh -huh. Yeah, we gotta get all the presents for the kids. Alright, let's go to the snowman here. Oof, that was terrible. Is the water too cold for you, Banjo? Well, stay out back. There's some very mean ice in this game. We got the one jiggy here. Here we go, and let me see. Let's go get at this switch switch here. Oh, shit. And that's opened. We're not actually going to get that until much later. Okay. That was dumb. I should have went over there. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go into the snow, into the. We're gonna go up here. Limbo token here. You get one of the presents in here, and we're gonna find some notes. Here. Crease me. Banjo-Kazooie! Okay, we can just grab it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about getting other stuff. If they had some gold feathers, maybe I would try to go get them, but... I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna worry about that area later. We're gonna go there later. We're gonna go up there later. So actually, um, the song that I played at the very beginning of this uh, of this video is a song called Advent, right? And you can find it up on YouTube. Uh, I believe the game, I mean, that song is actually still present in the game, but it is unused. And a lot of people theorize that that, that song was made initially for... Oh, that kind of sucks. 
uh, and that it was initially made for. Uh, yeah. That it was initially made for Freeze Easy Peak. Because the entrance of Freeze Easy Peak kind of kind of. It sort of looks like an advent calendar. And uh, I just really like the song, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know how it got really leaked online, but there was, uh, maybe Grant Kirkhope put it out online himself, but there was a, there was a beta, uh, CD of, like, all the songs that were going to be in Banjo-Kazooie, uh, like, some of the songs that were, you know, that could have been in the game, but were either, like, not put in the game or reworked in other games, and, uh, it's just a really awesome CD. I don't know if I can link it to you, because I don't know if it's around anymore. I don't think you can find it. But, uh, it is really cool. Okay, so I think that's it for the snowman. I think we're going here. Oh! Ow! That hurt. Okay. We're going to take some more damage here, actually. Mm. And we're gonna turn. We're gonna do our uh, transformation. Yep, 15 mumbo tokens, and we're pretty good with that. A bunch of notes. There we go. Walrish. Yeah, the Walrus transformation is a little bit, um... It's kind of useless, really. Uh, at the end of the day, like, all you can do is move. I feel like there's a number of transformations in Banjo-Kazooie where, like, you can't really do much with it, and that kind of sucks. As it's, it's mostly needed, like, the Walrus here, like, it can't do anything. It can't attack, it can only jump, and it can go through cold water. But other than that, it's like completely useless. Uh, the only thing that it really can do is like initiate certain s sequences, I guess. Like right here. I'm gonna have to race Boggy with his sled. And Banjo can't ride the sled because he's too big. Okay, I think that's all of them. Hey, Mr. Walrus, fancy a race? Hop on the sled if you do. Yep. Great, now all you need to do is steer your sled through the Red Salem gates and beat me to the end. Got it? Three, two, one, go! Yeah, so we're racing and we gotta go through these little flags here. And, um, we gotta race this guy twice. One as the walrus and the second- Oh my god, that was terrible. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. <laughs> but we're still fine, even though he's ahead of us. Wow, I am miserable right now. I still think it's fine. I still think we're going to be okay. First, because he kind of slows down a bit until we catch up, but also there is uh, a, a certain number of spots later on that you can gain a ton of distance from. Man, I never really screwed up that badly with the walrus before. Not typically. This part's bad because if you fall into the water, you're done. Yeah, this race is still playing out, as it usually does, so... Right here, so if you just keep jumping whenever you're on a slope, like, you gain tons of speed. Ooh, you're too quick for me, Mr. Walrus. Here's your medal. I reckon I'll need to race someone my own size. And that you will. Wish I could keep your sled and be able to move around quicker. Okay, we got Wazza here. Wow, another walrus. Take this, but watch out for a smelly brown bear and his ugly bird partner. Yeah, Wazza's kind of, um... Kind of, kind of prejudiced, I think. It's kind of, kind of a bad... Kind of a bad egg. Actually, hold on. I gotta go into his cave, actually.
Okay. Yeah, this is also one of the other things you can do with the walrus. You just enter this cave so you can get the empty honeycomb piece. I would have really liked it if, uh, if, if that was like the last of the set so I could have gotten my health back. But oh well. Yeah, we don't need to talk to Wuzzin. And because of that, we can actually go in there with Banjo and Kazooie. Uh, and there is a Jinjo in there. So we're gonna need... We're gonna need to go in there later. Here's the last few notes. So now if we die, we're good to go. Actually, let's just go directly to Mumbo's. Actually, there is a Mumbo token right over here that we're gonna want to get, I guess. There we go. Yeah, the only thing left to do is to do... Well, okay, there's a presence as well. Uh, but we have a, a race with Boggy. Take me to the kids! I'm the last one! Yep. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna do our race with Boggy, this Banjo and Kazooie. And, um, like, that was the big reason why for why we need to go into, uh, Gobi's Valley is so that we can get the running shoes. So we can properly race Boggy. Oh, I didn't mean to... I wanted to roll away. <sighs> oh, oh, this is cool. <laughs> I'm glad I did it, I guess. Um, spell went wrong. Mumbo's loincloth all dirty. You wash her, her. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the random things that could happen with uh, the transformations. Uh, there might be another one. We might be able to see another one later on. So uh, I'm not going to tell about it, but yeah. But uh, yeah, some random event. I'm kind of glad that I got that because it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun to see that. Okay, we're not going to run across because we don't have enough health for that, I don't think. Oh no, the timer is so slow on this one. Or not slow, but not that much. Hey buddy, fancy a race against Boggy? Press A to accept or B to chicken out. Okay buddy, here's the rules. Run through the red silent gates and try to beat me to the end. That was basically the same thing again. But this time we're Banjo Kazooie and we're using the running shoes. If I can actually grab the running shoes. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, I'm so slow that he he's quitting the race. That's, that's so stupid. And that's the reason why you can't do this uh, this jiggy without the without the running shoes. And as you see, even just a few seconds of missing it, he just ends it immediately. I feel like I would have probably been able to take him anyway. There we go. Yeah, maneuvering with Banjo and Kazooie. For this mini game is a little bit harder because they turn a lot quicker and move faster as well so you can easily mess up especially here with the angle it's kind of like this weird angle hitting that one <laughs> i think it's funny how it makes that noise sometimes i think we should be okay gonna be close oh my god really wow he was um he was not letting go this time wow that's crazy i really thought i could do it i don't really know how i could have gone faster hmm wait did he just say he'll try to make it easier on me Okay, camera, can you- what are you doing? T 
typically I hate whenever games have like, um, I forget what it's technically called, but it, they make the game easier. Or it's like if you fail at something, they start making the game easier so that you'll be able to complete it. I don't think I'm gonna beat it now. I'm definitely not gonna be able to beat it. Jeez, what the hell is wrong with me? How come I can't do these anymore? Yeah, there's no way I'm beating them. I should have just given up. Oh my god, I actually would have done it if it wasn't for that stupid thing in the way. <sighs> wow, I, uh, I'm, I'm doing... Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Foggy, come on. I'll try to make it close this time. <laughs> Maybe that gives me a better start. Look at this angle. What the hell are you doing, game? Man, I've never had this much trouble before. Why? Why? Oh my gosh, what the hell? Oh, come on. Jump. Jump. Please. You're failing me here, game. Like, Boggy is just making it easier on me because I'm failing all the time. <laughs> just end. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. No more talking. Boggy and his fat ass, I can't get behind. Get in front of him. Shut up. That was terrible on my part. Oh my gosh. <laughs> really sucks. Especially because like previous playthroughs I was able to get them all in one go. Ugh. Okay, so, as you can hear, the music in here, uh, one of the stop and swap items is in here. It's the infamous ice key. Uh, in normal playthroughs, there'll be like an ice that's blocking it, so a lot of players will come up here, get that Jinjo, and then they'll see an ice key like rotating on that pedestal over there. And uh, so many people are like, what the hell is that? And they, you know, you complete the whole game and you beat it 100% and everything. But then, it's like that ice key's still there, so like, what's the purpose of it? And that's why a lot of people, uh, were just so intrigued by Stop and Swap and everything else. All the little secrets that this game has. Wondering what the hell that ice key is. But yeah, that's Freezy Peak. We got everything, we just need to turn in the presents for the kids, and then, uh, we'll be good to go. Oh my god, I'm so disappointed with that. Uh, both both the, the crocodile too, like... I feel ashamed. Shut up, Boggy. I don't want to talk to you anymore. You need your kids either. Presents or Boggy can't get you gifts and stuff. It's 
kind of weird because in their igloo they have a picture of Banjo Kazooie. It's like, why is that there? Did we know each other? What's going on? Okay. Yep, crazy easy peek is. Goodbye, favorite level of mine. At least we got the notes. That's good. Like, I could accidentally miss a... a Jiggy, or I could miss a, um... Empty honeycomb piece or something like that. And I'd be like, that's fine. I don't care. But notes. We gotta get those notes. Very important. Eat the damage. Oh, actually, there's a Brentilda back here I forgot about. Grunty's best friend at witch school was the awful Sweaty Betty. When relaxing, she usually reads Warty Girls Weekly. While sipping a glass of her favorite cold worm juice. Here we go. Oh, thank you. That's good. Get all our health back. All right, Goby's Valley. And we have returned! There's a Jinjo back there. Gonna grab these shoes. Help us... well, shoot. If I could get these damn notes! Oh, shit. Come on. I think I'm going a little bit too fast. Up. We're gonna go up this guy. Actually, we're going to. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna grab these shoes. We're gonna get some notes. Yeah. I feel like I kind of want to talk a little bit more about. I feel like Banjo Kazooie and I guess 3D platformers in general, I guess. It's like, as of late, there seems to be somewhat of a resurgence when it comes to 3D platformers. And I'm like super excited about that. Like, I, I love 3D platformers and my favorite genre of games. I feel like we haven't been getting enough of these lately. Like, even with Mario, typically we always see a... Typically we always see a, a, a new 3D platforming... Really? Oh, come on now. Yeah, typically we see a new 3D platforming Mario game with every generation. You know, like Mario Galaxy, Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine. And on the Switch we got uh, Mario Odyssey. But like, the fact that there wasn't a, a 3D Mario, like a, a traditional 3D platforming Mario game for the Wii U, like that got me really disappointed. Like, even though, you know, Super Mario 3D World is okay, Whatever. Typically you can do it on both sides, on the same side, but... Oh gosh. There we go. You know, it just kind of felt like, for a time, that nobody really wanted to make 3D platformers at all. And it just really sucks. Um, but now it's like, it kind of seems like things are changing. And that's really hopeful for me, especially when we got a game like uh, Psychonauts 2 that just came out. I played that one, it's like fantastic. I might end up playing uh, the first Psychonauts on the channel, maybe the second one if enough time has passed. Hopefully I can get these all in one go here. But yeah, I was uh, really happy to see more 3D platformers come out. It's like, that's all, like, because I grew up with the N64, and that's pretty much all what the N64 had, right? We got Banjo-Kazooie, Super Mario 64, Gex, Glover, 
Um, one of the things I <laughs> picking the ones randomly from my head. Uh, like, yeah, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Donkey Kong 64. I mean, just like the system was covered with it, with platformers, and I, you know, and it's so good. I, I love those games. But then we get to like the like the GameCube was pretty good with them too. It wasn't too bad. Oh right, we have to fly. I hate climbing this thing so many times. But then like the GameCube era came out, and there was some good platformers in there too. I guess it started to sort of dwindle a little bit. Look at this guy. Summon all the hidden rings of the ancients to beat the witch. So these guys are proposing that we're that they're gonna defeat Grunty for us if we just fly through a few rings. But yeah, I was uh <laughs> downtrodden, especially during like the Xbox 360, PS3 era, it just felt like there wasn't really anything. Like PS2 and Xbox era, like we got games like Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, uh, you know, a bunch of Crash Bandicoot games also came out during that time too. And then there were, uh... And there's a whole bunch of games during that time. Psychonauts as well, right? But then the Xbox 360 and PS3 area came out. Uh, 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 only joking, Mortal, we can only give you this. They're gonna give us a jiggy. Yeah, the PS3 and Xbox 360 era came out, and that was where everybody wanted, you know, super realistic graphics, and they wanted everything to look real. And, you know, it was this huge switch to first-person shooters. And it just seemed like an era where nobody wanted to play 3D platformers. Are you kidding me? Ow! I am failing at just the smallest tasks today. Really? But it seemed like, yeah, nobody really cared for platformers at the time. It was all about them first-person shooters and super realistic graphics. And it was kind of an era that I, I honestly don't really much care for, for the most part. I mean, it was fine. There was a ton of really great games, right? There we go. Like, there was tons of games. I, I I got tons of really good games. I mean, even with the, you know, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, even like, you know, the, here, here's my little story. So, uh, when that era, when that generation of consoles were out, like we, PS3, Xbox 360 was out. Like, I knew for a fact that I wanted a Wii 100%, and I ended up getting that. Uh, but I also really wanted kind of like a big powerhouse console, like the the PS3 and the like, I, I wanted a PS3, not an Xbox 360, and that's mostly because Microsoft never really catered games to me at that point in time. And like, even with, uh, you know, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, it's like they wanted to change the gameplay so much. It even said in-game, like, nobody wants a platformer anymore. And that just made me really disappointed. Get up yeah. Yeah, that got me really disappointed. I never really liked that generation. It moved so much away, everything changed so much. I don't like change, I'm an old man. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> but it, it it basically was the transition from the games that I love playing to the games where it's just like, oh I don't really much care for it at all. Right, so I hope you kinda understand that. And that's why I don't really much care for it. I mean, now, there's so many games. <laughs> it's like, finally reached a point where, you know, people can, you know, like, indie games are huge, and we have some really great indie companies, like, uh, like, Siri, or was it Gears for Breakfast? And the, uh, like, A Hat in Time. I love that game so much. Right, and... It just kind of brings me some hope that the 3D platforming genre will come back in a big way sometime. But I think the one 
sign that I feel like that people really wanted 3D platformers back where like the Kickstarter for for ukulele right ukulele's Kickstarter I think is like one of the most successful Kickstars ever I think which is huge and you know I was really excited to hear about the news that like so many people wanted another 3D platformer and not just that but oh, it was a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie as well right so that got me really hopeful for the game and everything I was I was just so super excited to hear more about ukulele um, but you know okay let's, let's start talking about ukulele I gotta say when I was first when I first seen the character designs for ukulele I was to be honest I was a little bit disappointed because it, I don't know a guana and a bat are just a little bit too exotic for me I think like, they wanted some really weird duo, like, oh my god, bear and a bird, that's so crazy, but then it's like, oh yeah, but like, bear and a, not, uh, and a guana and a bat, like, wow, that's even crazier. Like, what an unlikely duo. I just felt like it was more, like, sort of try hardish I guess. Here we go, we got them all, that's good. I think Lisa managed to do that in one go. Usually I don't do it. It almost feels, yeah, it almost kind of felt a little bit try hard with Yukon Lele on that front. But, uh, it was okay. And, and, and I bought the game, of course. I played it 100%. And it was really, really good. Uh, the critics were pretty harsh on the game. I can be kind of harsh on the game, too. But at the same time, it's like, would you rather have a platformer or no platformer, right? And that, and that kind of does make a, a, a big question there. But it, yeah, so in general, I really do love Ukulele. I think the first game is phenomenal. Like, it, it is really good. Okay, maybe not phenomenal, but it is really good. There are some issues that I have with it, but... No, for the most part... Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. I'm going for it. Who cares? There we go. We're gonna have to wait for the... thing to come back, but... There's your reward bear! Go be off to cool down! Yeah, I really do like ukulele. It just, it has some issues that I'm not very... that I'm not a very big fan of. Um, like the stamina bar is a little bit weird. Like, I, I don't know, it's... I have mixed feelings of the whole thing. I feel like capital B's... Like, Factory isn't as good as Grunty's Lair. Like, it, it because the games are so similar, right? It, it's a, trying to achieve the same thing, even has, like, the same aesthetic and look and everything. It's like... It's almost like they're trying to compare the two series together, and ultimately that's... It's kind of a shitty thing. Because they are, like, almost two totally different games. For the most part. But they're very similar, I don't know. Alright, so we got a little matching puzzle here. I don't know all of the spots, but... I know a few of them. Bear... Umbo... Ugh... Feather... Uh, note... I think this is Mumbo. Yep. It's feather, feather. Here we go. I gotta say, this is probably one of the quickest times I've ever done this level, or uh, this little mini game here. <laughs> so yeah, I, I am a little bit critical of ukulele, but at the same time, I, I really liked how they they made it and everything. It was, it was good. It just, I don't know, something about it, something about it. I'm not, I'm not. 100% on board with, at least with the first game, and then I played Ukulele in the Impossible Lair, and I have to say, it completely changed my mind. I'm like, dude, this this series is awesome. Like, if we can get more games like this, I would be totally down for it. 100%. I, I love the Impossible Lair. I love the gimmick that they did for it. Oh. 
I love the gimmick that they had for it where um, you first start off kind of like in the last level of the game and then you have to like go through this whole gauntlet challenge like all this these crazy platforming challenges that are like super super hard and um you're, you're gonna like die pretty much at some point and uh Basically, the main thing is you have to complete levels to free these little things, these little bees called battalions, and they actually act as an extra hit for the impossible lair. And so you end up getting like a whole bunch of extra hits or whatever for the final bot or for that final gauntlet. And, which is like you can you can tackle the impossible lair and beat the game at the very beginning. Like there are some some players who have, who have beaten the entire game without having to complete a single level. And they're able to just completely take on the impossible lair. I, I love that concept. It's so good. Like it, it completely blew my mind that that's how the game worked when I bought it. I, was like, I just bought it because I'm like, oh, ukulele, impossible lair. That's, that's kind of cool. I'm going to get that, see how it goes. And it just like ex you know, completely blew my expectations for it. It's like, I'm, I'm kind of at the point in games where I'm a little bit sick of 2D platformers, because there's so many of them, like, there's a lot of indie developers that make a whole bunch of 2D platformers and stuff, and I'm just like, eh, I'm kind of over it. But uh, Ukulele just had such a unique concept that I'm just like, dude, I'm totally down for it. I think that's all of them. Yep. So yeah, tons of praise for In the Impossible Air. I will say one thing that actually worries me when it comes to, like, the creation of Yukon and Laylee is that my biggest worry is that because Yukon and Laylee exists, because they use the same sort of style that Banjo-Kazooie does, that there may never be another Banjo-Kazooie game because Yukon and Laylee exist. And it's like, well, we have Yukon and Laylee, so we don't need, we don't need another Banjo-Kazooie because Yukon and Laylee here and they kind of fit that niche. And I'm just like, no, I, I honestly, I would, I would rather a Banjo-Kazooie game than a ukulele. I really would. Okay, so there's two paths, not this path. <laughs> there's two paths to take. There is this one over here. And this actually takes you to the witch switch that I was talking to you about earlier. That opens up the sarcophagus. <gasps> and there's nothing! <laughs> You know, it takes you to the sarcophagus. And then this route is gonna take you to the jiggy. Oh, it has to be in my way. Through here. Nope, not that way. Here we go. Like, even though the music is trying to make you, like, freak you out, be like, Oh my god, you don't have any time! You've got tons of time. I'm not 100% on this, but I kind of feel like I missed the... I, I feel like I missed the note. Yeah, I feel like I missed the note. It might be under the water. Or it could be on the side of the thing. I'll have to check, but I'm not... I'm not 100% on it. Because there's only like one more thing left to do, and I kind of know where the rest of the notes are, but I don't know if there's six of them. I think there was only five. But we'll have to check. Yeah, yeah. We hit Gobi, he feeds the tree water, and gonna get the Jiggy on top of his head here. It kind of sucks because you can't climb them. You have to jump on this tree and then jump over here. It's such a pain. And that's all the jiggies. We need the empty honeycomb piece and the rest of the notes. But yeah, I, I really do feel like I missed a note somewhere. Just one. One stupid note. Or, uh, let me see here. Go up here. 
I could be wrong. There might be six. I, I'm pretty sure there's only five, though. I go over here. Yeah, there's only five. That's it, I'm leaving this desert to leave some peace and quiet. And we're gonna meet him again. I knew it, I knew I'm missing one. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I have an idea, I have two spots where it could be. So I might not have gotten them all into the water. Yeah, as the music signified, this is a spot where you would find the, another stop and swap egg. Just wanted to show that off. Yeah, one, one note, that's all it takes. You, you screw up, you accidentally, you know, don't get that one note. Now I gotta wait for a stupid carpet to show up. I mean, am I gonna be okay? Ah, I better wait. <sighs> you running around this whole level just to find one stupid note? Come on, hurry up. Okay. So I have a few spots where it could be. It did be up here, but I, I might have missed it here. I think another thing I want to do is kind of keep an eye out for the water. Wow, I gotta say, I've never missed a Jiggy in a very long time like this. I don't know how I missed it. Sucks. <laughs> I kind of wonder if you're like watching the video, be like, "Oh no, that G, that note. He missed the note. It's over there." Yeah, I don't think it's down here either. Shit. Ugh. Let me see. I don't think it's in here, because there's two of them. I would have grabbed them both. Uh, there could have been one through here, but I, I might have missed one there. Nope, that's good. I'm gonna check in here. Oh, there might have actually been a G that I might have missed when climbing up the... Think. No, I got them all in here. I could have accidentally missed one up here. I thought I got them all, but maybe I missed the last one. I'm not seeing it. Nope, not here. Shit. Oh, is it here? Yeah, it is here. Okay, okay, okay. Because I jumped here, I was gonna come this way, but then I, uh, I, I backtracked. Alright, okay. Ugh. That was a waste of time again. I feel like my time is gonna be worse than it's ever been. <laughs> Ugh. You can actually gain some time back in uh, one particular level, but uh, that's fine. Plus, we need to get the empty honeycomb piece. I have not gotten that quite yet, though. It's over here. There it is. It'll be kind of tricky to get. I don't really recommend launching yourself through it, but uh, yeah, just kind of take that one a little bit slower if you if you can. Let's see if I can. No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I was gonna rocket towards it, but nah, I'm not gonna do that. Oh, come on. There we go, Gobi's Valley. 
jump! Tank the damage! Yeah, I was just really worried that ukulele might ruin the whole... I... It's one of those things. Would I rather have Banjo-Kazooie... or... Ukulele, but forego a chance of a Banjo-Kazooie game ever happening? Or would I rather just take ukulele for, yeah, and just have it so that Banjo-Kazooie never happens. Or that there could never be another Banjo-Kazooie game. And a part of me kind of feels like I would rather just never have ukulele for just a chance at having Banjo-Kazooie. But you know what? I feel like I might have the best of both worlds soon. I'll get that a bit. Tadpoles on toast for breakfast? Usually has maggot pie for dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ward bags and finishes with rat sorbet for. Thing. Thank you. And that's good for here. So now we have to. Right, we have to go this way. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there could be a really good chance that another Banjo Kazooie game is made. I really hope so. Um, you know, whoever makes the game, a lot of people do want. A lot of people do really want. Um, you know, the same people that made Ukulele to make the new Banjo Kazooie game. But. Like, I don't know if they would do that, because it's like, they're looking at ukulele. It just seems strange. Yeah, I don't know. I really do kind of hope that... Like, if, if there are if there are people to make another Banjo-Kazooie game, it would be them. But if another team decides to make it, I'd be okay with that too. taking this little here so we can get to the next puzzle and there are only three more levels left in the game this is a level that uh, a lot of people say is their favorite in the entire game man monster mansion which I kind of get but I'm not I'm not really a big fan of this level <laughs> I think it's okay but I'm not, like, super hardcore into it. There's oh. where the entrance is. I'm just hoping that, uh, because Banjo and Kazooie are in Smash Brothers, and the reaction towards them are, like, is just huge. Right, like, I love watching those reaction videos, people. And for Banjo Kazooie being in Smash, and uh, I really did wish that I kind of, that I would have, like, filmed my own reaction because it was just like insane. Like I was, I was going crazy because it's like, oh my god, like here's a game, or like here's a characters that I've wanted in Smash for like so many years. And to finally have them is just so cool. Okay, so we gotta go to where Toby's Valley's puzzle used to be. In here. Used to be as if it disappeared. <laughs> okay, so note something here. I can actually like stand next to the wall because it's like if you fall, you like die in the lava. That's, well, let me get a little closer, I guess. Like there's lava there. So I like to stick close to the side, but here's the thing. You can't do that here because there's this big space here and you could easily fall in there and die. So you definitely want to, um, you know, be mindful of that.
Yeah. Okay, so before going into the level, you definitely want to knock down this gate. Because we're gonna have to go through there. See down there, there's a door, there's a little... There's a little hole that you have to go through, but Banjo Kazooie are too small to go through, so you'll need the transformation to go down there. And that isn't like to get a Cheeto book or anything like that, that's actually to progress through the lair, you have to do it. Like, this level is absolutely mandatory that you go through it. Here we go. We're gonna go through this window here. I don't think there's actually anything of use in here besides feathers. But I like to check all the windows just in case. We can also knock this door, but we're not going to go in there quite yet. Because we need to go through a different entrance before we go in there. Alright, let's go down here. There's a Jinjo. Actually, let me grab this first. Here we go. Wow, okay. It hurts! The water hurts! There's a little path up there, but we're gonna be going over there a little bit later. We got a thing there. Got some awesome music going. Okay, there's another window. It's the egg... The egg space. Okay, so... Here we go. Big lore dump coming in. You look at this image here. And you think, oh, it's just like decoration for the mansion, right? But the thing is, this is actually an image of what was going to be uh, Banjo-Kazooie, which at the time was Project Dream's main villain, Captain Black Eye. And Cam Black Eye also makes a cameo appearance in Banjo Tooie as well. And he actually has a model and everything, and you can go and go up to him and talk to him. That's pretty cool. But yeah, initially Banjo Kazooie was called Project Dream, and it was going to be on the Super Nintendo initially. Yeah, it was going to be on the Super Nintendo initially, uh, but then it was brought over to the Nintendo 64, and it starred. The main character was going to be a boy named Edison. He had like a dog or something. And it was going to use like the pre-rendered graphics that were seen in the Donkey Kong Country games. They look really cool. You have these ghosts, you can only kill them with uh, gold feathers, so you might as well just take care of them real quick. And you these things has stuff in them, so... But yeah, Project Dream... There's just such a really interesting history behind Banjo-Kazooie and how it went from Project Dream and evolved over time into Banjo-Kazooie. And you can find a lot of videos on like the development of Project Dream and Banjo-Kazooie early stuff and how the game changed over time on YouTube. And you can find them in the Rare Replay as well. So it's just like, go check out those videos. They'll probably do a hell of a lot better explanation than me, but it's just a very, very interesting history. All right, so the usual fanfare where you would be able to find a, a stop and swap egg here. On normal playthroughs, uh, you wouldn't be able to break this at all. There would be like an X over top of it. You wouldn't be able to, to get into it. But yeah, Project Dream and everything like that. Like, <laughs> I learned a shit ton of information about the history of Banjo Kazooie through a website that I came across at the time called spiralmountain.co.uk and it was a Banjo-Kazooie it was a very big Banjo-Kazooie like fan website and uh, people just constantly wanted to know more about Stop and Swap and the history of Banjo-Kazooie like all these forums and all these stuff people discussing the games it was crazy it was so much fun and uh yeah, they put like compiled all kinds of like game shark codes and ways to manipulate the game and all that stuff. Trying to find out all this beta information. It was like a huge hub of all the very like all this information about what Banjo Kazooie was going to be and 
theories and it was just awesome. I I actually came across I actually came across the website by uh, it was it was one of the first things I ever looked up on YouTube or not YouTube sorry it was one of the first things I ever looked up on when it came to like Google and the internet right so after. Did I? Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know if there was going to be another Banjo-Kazooie game after Banjo-Tooie, because it kind of leads you to believe that there might be. And I've been waiting for a very long time to hear news of one, so I went on, I went online, and I, and that's when I actually found out about the, about the infamous uh, Banjo-Kazooie 3 teaser trailer, right? The one with, uh, like, Banjo-Kazooie kind of going this, like, um, they're like in a room and there's this door and they're trying to break down the door because they look through and they can see Spiral Mountain in it, right? It's just like a, a big infamous trailer. Uh, got so many people excited for it. And so when I wanted to learn more about the information, like more about the game and everything, that's how I came across this website. Oh, I don't need to be down here actually. I can knock this door down though. Okay, you know what? While we're here, we might as well just do this. Typically, this is one of the last things I do, but... Eh, yeah, screw it. <laughs> yeah, going a little bit out of my usual order, but whatever. Oh look, three seconds left. Usually I always end with two. I'm one second faster. It's not what I wanted to do. Come on. I hate these ghosts. I kind of hate this section because you need to go up on top of these and get the notes. Yeah, in addition to finding out more information about Banjo-Kazooie, there was a whole bunch of videos that people posted. They were on YouTube, but linked onto the website. That people would, like, make stories using the gameplay. Uh, I think kind of like the more famous example of today would be, uh, if you've ever heard of the YouTuber named SMG4, who uses uh, video game models, uh, specifically like Mario. And they, uh, yeah, specifically like Mario, and they like make all these funny stories and stuff like that. And so, if you go onto his channel, Mott's end. We're just gonna have to follow his uh, key presses. So, if you follow SM, like, if you watch all of SMG's floors videos from like the very beginning, his earliest videos, you'll see that they're they're kind of crappy because they're like gameplay and then you have like text on the bottom and they have like you create little stories out of it I, that that's the kind of videos that you would find on SM or on uh, Spiral Mountain where people would try to make little stories but it would be about Banjo-Kazooie and they would do like all kinds of like model swaps and stuff and uh, kind of make the videos look as if things changed like I remember one video where they had it so that you could uh, jump inside the Grunty painting at the entrance of Grunty's lair, and if you did that, it would lead you to a room where you can activate stop and swap. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Like all kinds of videos like that, or like in Treasure Trove Cove, there was like the, they have the lighthouse, and one person made a video that they swapped out the lighthouse for Mumbo Skull, and. When you went to that Mumbo Skull and you did the transformation, you actually turned into 2D. That always really stuck to me because I'm like, oh my god, how do you do that? Because it looks so real. And I, I thought that so many of these videos were actually real. So I was a stupid naive kid. It was so cool. And that actually got me interested in making videos on YouTube myself. So I, I actually started making a number of those kind of videos where um, you, you record gameplay and you have like little text underneath trying to create a story 
and that was like one of the first videos I ever put on YouTube. Uh, the first video I made was called Banjo Meets Banjo, and that one sucked. <laughs> I think I got like a thousand views or something like that, which was awesome, and people were making comments, and I was super excited for it. Um, but yeah, it's uh... Eh, I hate this stupid camera. What are you doing? Ruin my groove! Just gonna fall. And there we go, that's the inside done. Yeah, Banjo meets Banjo, it had- I, I basically model swapped everything that I could. Like, lives. Uh, like, sh shock spring jump pads, all the enemies that I could find. I would all swap them out with, like, Banjo's model or something. Uh. There we go. And Banjo would just kind of run around and be like, Oh no, what the hell's going on? And then he'd like wake up in his bed and be like, Oh, it was all a dream. And then he'd walk out, but then everyone's still Banjo and be like, Oh no, it wasn't a dream. It was really stupid. <laughs> and uh, for people who kind of like understood my pain, like the people who know what uh, unregistered like uh, hypercam was, right? Stupid unregistered hypercam. Here we go. Yeah, screen recorders are a lot easier. I mean, we have like OBS. Like, I would have killed to have a program like OBS when I was growing up. It's free, open source. Back then, you had to use stupid freaking Hypercam 2. It was terrible. Oh. Like, it wouldn't even record audio. I had to, like, put my own audio in the background. Really glad that we moved away from that. Okay. Gotta get these notes. Where do you have to put them on the... On the tops of them? It makes it so hard to grab. Oh, there we go. Grab it. Are you? Mm. Why did that happen? Would have been nice if I actually landed over on this side. Here we go. Eh. Why are you doing this? Why is he jumping like that? Come on. I don't know why, but this playthrough in particular, I've just been having such bad luck. I don't understand it. I'm gonna fall off every single note. Like, can I just grab it without having to jump? Jeez. Okay, that's all done. No more worrying about this area anymore. Now we gotta go on top of the mansion here. We're we gonna wrap our way around. We're gonna open the doors here. Or windows. There we go. Okay, there's literally nothing in here for uh, Banjo right now. We're gonna have to come over there after we get the transformation.
I think it would have been kind of cool if the transformation in this stage was a bat. But I totally get that. Like, being able to fly is pretty powerful. Yep. Some more fanfare. There's actually two stop and swap items in this stage. And, uh, I kind of forget where the location of the egg is, but I, I think it's on top of the... Yeah, yeah. I think it's on top of the toilet. I think it just sits right here. I could be wrong, though. I kind of forget. It's been a while since I last grabbed it. Oh. <sighs> Whatever. Come on. I always found this room really strange because, like, after hearing about Captain Black Eye, I, I thought that this was his room because not only does it have a picture of Captain Black Eye, but it has this uh, treasure chest here. And so it kind of made me think that maybe it was his room because this doesn't really feel like Grunty's room, right? Either Captain Black Eye was like his her boyfriend or something like that. Okay, we got Oof, almost fell. There we go. Let's see if we can No, I wanna hook up to the There we go. Ooh, it's the the, the note room. There's one note that's sitting right there. Got everything? Yep. Okay, so two more notes on top of the building here. There we go. There we go, Jinjo. We were able to go into the chimney here. Ah. Which puts us into the main area of the house. Yeah, the main reason why we didn't go through the the main door at the beginning when we spawned into the level is because we needed to be able to cross without stepping on the, the creaky flooring. If you do, then it wakes up the ghost. Grunty's gold, how it shone, she'll be mad, now it's gone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man, my boot all put up your usually spooky butt. <laughs> okay, so we have all these pictures here. But the one that really does stand out is this Mumbo one. And it's just so strange to see Mumbo, especially it's a very creepy picture of Mumbo as well. It's like very dark. Um, and a little bit of history with Mumbo is that initially they had an idea that Mumbo was going to be Grunty's boyfriend. And uh, I guess she like Mumbo like pissed her off or something like that. And so she cursed him. No, no, no maybe it wasn't her boyfriend. I think it was her teacher. That Mumbo was her teacher. That Mumbo was the one that taught her magic. And... Yeah, I think that's the one. And then she ended up cursing him by turning his face into a skull. I think that's how it went down. Ooh, two for one. Yeah, she cursed him to wear this to have a skull on his head. And but they kind of took that away. Which is kind of interesting, because, like... I, I really don't know why they took that out. Because, like, having Mumbo become, like, Grunty's teacher and everything, it just kind of adds more backstory, and anytime you can add more story is always a good thing in my book. I don't think we need to go over there. I think we're good. If not, then I know that there might be some notes in here. Alright, do we have everything? I think we are good. I think we're good for the transformation. I hope so. <laughs> it would suck if I missed something. 
There's something good up here. Here, there's gold feathers. Yeah, gold feathers are good. I think there's only one, though. There we go. Yep, the transformation for this stage is a pumpkin, which is pretty much useless. You can't basically do anything with the pumpkin. I feel like he's even more worthless than the walrus. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, uh, you can do some really good stuff with the pumpkin. Yeah. When I was a kid, I had such a hell of a hard time figuring out how to get on top of the mansion with the pumpkin. Because like, when you see a room like this, where you can't access the empty honeycomb piece... Um, I kind of want the... yeah. Just gonna grab some. Not gonna worry about that one. Like, obviously the pumpkin comes up here. But I couldn't for the life of me find out a way to get up here. Um, and I had this theory that you would have to turn into a pumpkin and ride one of these enemy bats to get to the top. So I was like jumping at them like an idiot. Alright, here comes the most disgusting part of the game! I don't know how they managed to have this in a kid's game, it's so gross. Like, what do you think all this is? Really? Like, really? What do you what do you think all of this is? Like, what else can it be? It's disgusting. I can't believe you went in there! No. <laughs> or whatever. Basically tells us to wash yourself off. Okay, I think... There's only one other thing here, and this is also another reason I knew that we had to come up as a as a pumpkin. Because you have to go down here. Because there's a jiggy that's just like hanging up in the air. There's a jiggy that's like hanging up in the air and you can't grab at it. Okay. So we just have one other area to go through. And uh, I, I opened the gate earlier so that we can just take this little shortcut here. And we got uh, some notes. Come on. Yep, yeah, we are on pace. We're good. Okay, up we go. We have a bunch of notes in here, and there's also a jiggy as well. You can actually come in here as Banjo and Kazooie. And you could swim to try to get these notes, but it's really difficult to do that. And there we go. There's the final jiggy. So if we look at the totals, we got everything. Yep, another level down, but we are still going to use this transformation for two more things. Uh, one I'm a little bit nervous about, but the other, not so much. Okay, so yep, the first thing we're going to do... I hate these things so much. Stupid gravestone. It's like there's nothing I can do. But yeah, we need to come in here. Absolutely necessary to progress in the game. There we go. There's a ghost in here. Just gotta turn back into Banjo-Kazooie. And we can break open. I don't take care of you then. Oh shit. Whatever. Get out of here. There. Boom. Yeah. 
There you go. We have to turn back into a pumpkin. Because we can't just escape. And plus we need the pumpkin for one more thing too. Pumpkin making Mumbo hungry. Me get pot ready. Yeah, I think we've long passed the halfway point. I think the halfway point is like Freezy Peak, Gobi Valley. But then again, the levels are a lot longer. Especially the last level. That level that last level is very, very large. But we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, we actually only have two more levels left in the game. And then a whole bunch of extra stuff. Okay, where am I? This is what we have to do. We have to navigate through this terribly... Like, I, I hate how it dims the lighting. So it's like kind of hard to see. And not to mention the graphics of the N64 aren't exactly the most clear. <gasps> there we go. Judy says she's fine with me. If you go home, I'll set her free. I kid you not, when I first heard that, I actually believed it. So I went back to Banjo Kazooie's house. <laughs> I thought it was like some kind of secret or whatever. Revolting Grandilda's bathroom was hanging <laughs> dirty undies from the ceiling. Gross. She also likes a, a Veruca plant. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what the hell that is. It'd be sick if you saw her enormous spotty purple undies. There we go, get some health back. And we get to see the next Cheeto. Cheeto, Bear, and Bird have found once more another spell they get. If one more page I see you turn, then Grunty shall Cheeto burn. Nasty witches, so cold I shall tell. Uh, red feathers on Sandcastle floor and treasure trove cove. And again, we'll be doing that pretty much later. I always found it weird that he's surrounded by gold feathers, so it kind of made me feel like he was going to give the gold feather code, not the red feather one. Uh, now we have to do this again. I hate this so much. I kind of wonder, is it... Do people need to actually get the Cheeto codes to get 100% in the game when it comes to speedrunning? Is that like a... Is that like a mandatory thing, or... Because, I mean, I could save off a ton of time not having to do this. <laughs> uh, there we go. We're good, we're good, we're good. Oof. I wanted to mention something earlier, but I didn't want to set a flag for it. <laughs> Mumbo magic get weak. Magic run out. Yeah, I didn't want to say that, uh, like, so far I haven't died in the whole game. So, uh, going for a good, uh, no death run so far. But I think that is going to change when we get to the next level, because it's the hardest level in the game, and it's only hard because of one reason. Other than that, it's actually a very tame level. Okay, so... I'm gonna go up here. Okay, I, 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 I realized I just forgot something, but... It's fine, we'll, we'll, we'll go back later, it's fine. It's the, the jiggies we got from uh, Mad Monster Mansion and Freeze Easy Peak we still need to get. I'm gonna go get this mumbo token. Grunty's plan is rather cunning. When I'm thin, guys will come running. I bet they would. I really do. <laughs> oh, I did kind of screw something up, but it's okay. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. We're good. We're gonna be going over there anyway. Or, or are we? Mm. Oh, whatever. Yeah, there's a cauldron over here. 
we can activate it. It's going to take us back out. Which I'm not going to do right now. Because we are going to activate the next level here. And we are going to do that. Do, 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 do. You just break that. Yeah, one time I did try to do a run where I wanted to skip a level. Um, and I was trying to skip this level here, Rusty Bucket Bay. Because there's this part in it that I hate so much. Oh my god, I hate it. But actually, I came up with I, I came up with an idea that I might be able to try uh, to make it easier on me. I never even thought of it before, but uh, I'm going to try to show it off, see if it works. If it works, I'm going to be so happy. It'll be insane. <laughs> it should make the, uh, make the level a lot easier if I can work it. Okay, so here's the strat for for, easy, uh, for Rusty Bucket Bay. If you're playing the Xbox Live Arcade version, this level is probably not going to be a big deal for you. Um, because, you know, you don't have to worry about the notes. But in a regular playthrough, the first thing you need to do, the absolute first thing you need to do to make sure that you don't die and lose all of your progress is to do this. Um, so there's an engine room, right? It's in here. Here's a part of it anyway. Outside, you see through the window, we have these rotating uh, fans, right? And it's in a room that has a bottomless pit. And the thing is, this game only has a handful of sections with bottomless pits. Like, we have the lava room that we saw earlier. If you fall in there, you're dead. And then... I think that's like and then you have like the final fight that has a bottomless pit too but for the most part i don't think there there's any other bottomless pits except for like we have a lot of like really high falls that we can go like there that are in there like there's tons of levels with high falls but there's not that many levels with insta kill death you know <laughs> right so if i fall down here i'm dead right there's not that many insta kill Balls in the game like this. Okay. And yeah, these uh, these little pipes are very slippery, so you want to make sure that they that you go once they're stopped. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the next rotation. Give it me as much time as I can. Okay. And go. We have to hit the switch here. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to work. I'm hoping it's going to work. But I'm going to try something here. So here's basically the big reason as for why this is such, is such a hard area. Is we have notes inside. And we have to make this jump. And this jump is very, very difficult. Because you can hurt yourself very easily to get through. So what I'm going to do, and I've never even thought of doing this. I just thought of it last time. I'm going to use invincibility and then jump through oh my god it's so much easier oh my god holy shit why did i never think of doing oh right there's an <laughs> there's also a jiggy in here <laughs> i can't believe i never thought of doing that i mean there are other areas where you could slip up and die but this was always my my biggest pain, was trying to get through these stupid propellers. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad it does that at the very least. There we go, we're good. Oof. Okay, I'm gonna hit the switch when this starts rotating. There we go. Now we have to run to the very back of the boat and make sure to get that jiggy. And we are timed. Come on. Yeah, and this part actually stops rotating, so we're good on that front. If I could just leave this room. Okay. Okay, I'm actually super glad. I don't think we're gonna die. I don't think we're gonna have a death in this game. I mean, I probably just raised a flag here, but... 
I think so far we're actually doing really, really good. So I will not have to return to this room if I can get this last Jiggy. And it's not too much of a big deal. I'm gonna I'm just gonna rush to it. Usually I try to get some of the notes, but I wanna I don't wanna have to do it again. Like these notes. I don't really wanna get these I wanna get these notes, but Okay. We're gonna try to get this Jiggy here. There you go. And up. And that's it. That is the hardest Jiggy in the game by far. Hardest part in the entire game. Completed. And I didn't die, so... That's a huge plus. I have done... In the multiple playthroughs that I've done trying to make this damn video, um, I've actually gotten better with each playthrough, so... And not to mention just uh, using that infinite... Uh, using the invulnerability to jump through, because usually I'd always end up hitting a super propeller, which would knock me into the water, or <laughs> knock me into my death. So I'm really, really happy that it turned out this way. Okay. Oh my gosh, my, my voice is getting a little scratchy. I have some water next to me, I've been drinking it, but, uh... But, uh... <laughs> I've been drinking it, but... Still getting scratchy. Yeah, so the toll only asks for two, but if you actually give them double, you'll be able to extend it a little further. I want to get these. Since we had to use some... on the thing... Okay, here we go. We want to get these. <laughs> yeah, maybe a no-death run is possible. Hmm. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to show off the, the game over screen, so... I guess technically it's not a no-death run, but... At least know that I didn't die. <laughs> on, without me, uh... You know, making it so. You know, I'll be showing the, the, the game over screen probably. probably after this. Yeah, probably after this level, before the final one, I'm gonna show it. And we'll also enter those codes as well, well. Uh, just after that. So this area has a bunch of notes. That's really good. Oh, back down. At least one good thing happened in this playthrough. <laughs> and the fact that uh, I was able to complete Rusty Bucket Pay without dying. It's like, I have, I have full... I have full confidence that I can beat this. Beat the rest of it. We don't really need to stick in this room. There's nothing else in it. We gotta go through the top here. And the only thing that we're gonna find in this room is a Jinjo and a Mumbo token. Hi! There's the Jinjo. And there's the Mumbo token. And that's it. There's a couple of other hidden things here, but... That's pretty much all we're gonna need. Oh, wait. Okay. Here we go. And we're done over here. We can't keep going around the outside because the toll is on the other side. Which sucks. But, uh, yeah, we're good. Let's go. Two more. Ah, that was terrible. Go up here. No, wrong one. Come on. There's a shark. 
We're just gonna ignore that shark. He can't bother us. Oh, okay, he can bother us, but not like you could do much to us. Yeah, so there's a little, uh, little hole in this wall. Now, this is like one of the very final things I ever did in my 100%, my first 100% playthrough. Because it was just such a hidden wall, I had no idea that existed. Little hidden entrance. And all it is is to get a uh, empty honeycomb piece. Over here. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong side. Here we go. Here we go. And we just have two more left, and they're both in the next level. <laughs> I repositioned myself. I've been sitting for so long. Okay. Now, you can actually enter this little building through the top, which actually places you closer to the Jiggy. But there's a couple of things that you can get that are near the bottom here, I think. Hey, whatever. Oh, shit. No, I didn't even push the B button. There. Wow, my health was dying. Holy shit. Or my air. Yeah, over here, there's gonna be some notes. Here we go. I almost drowned! Didn't even know! Okay, and the Jiggy is just over here. Alright, so let's exit this area here. And every time you exit this, it always puts you underwater. Which I feel like they did on purpose because there's this dolphin that's trapped under an anchor. And you can hear him as soon as you exit. So I'm thinking the developers did that on purpose. Otherwise, it's, it's a bit strange. Yeah. Oh, what a terrible job hitting them all. And the anchor just like drags across the dolphin. We get ourselves a jiggy. There we go. Ow. I think the water in here is actually safe. It doesn't take double air. I could be wrong, but I think it's okay. Now we need to get that jiggy. Getting real quick. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. I'd hate to die now. Okay, now we finally get to be on the boat. After all that time. There we go. Pretty much the only thing we're gonna need in here is just some notes. And a, I guess a mumbo token as well. Oh. There we go. Oh. No note left behind. Um. Come on. Get up. Oh, didn't mean to do that. There we go. There we go. Oof. I was afraid he was gonna hit me right off the boat. I was like, ooh, shit. Okay, so there's like a little bit of a, a cameo thing here. So, right here, uh, this little squirrel. Uh, that is Barry. 
That is uh, Conker's girlfriend, and that was the original design that they were going to have for her for the game Conker's uh, 12 Tales Conker 64. Um, she also has that design in uh, Conker's Pocket Tales as well, so it's kind of cool they had that. So 312 111, 312 111, 312 111. Remember that. It's very important. Because we're going to be inputting it right here. I feel like most people don't realize that sign's there. I mean, I didn't either. And I just, like, always brute forced this puzzle every time I came up to it. And then I found out about that, and I'm like, oh, shoot. Oh, it's over there. That's some slowdown. Okay. And there are some... Things we can open. This room's actually pretty interesting because it has a... We have this map, and this is actually a map of Treasure Trove Cove, and that X right there is where Sharktooth Island is, where we found the Stop and Swap egg. So it's just really cool that they have, uh, they have that there. I'm gonna go through here. Yeah. Good little Easter egg. Ooh. Scurry. Go through here. And we're in the kitchen. Whoop. Got another mumbo token over there. I'm just gonna grab it. <laughs> Stupid bear, you have to learn. That red hot ovens tend to burn. Yeah, I guess. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything in here. Got some notes. Mumbo token. Also a mumbo token here. Oh, shit. There we go. Let me go up here. Now, we were over there earlier, and I could have jumped up. There was a shock spring jump pad that I could have taken to get up here. I'm gonna get that later, I guess. Yeah, it's over on there. I could have taken it, but decided not to. Because I didn't want to go back on the boat and then come back out and all that stuff, so... Go, go, go! Okay, and here's the thing. You just have to be underneath it, and it won't come down. Right? So that's kind of a good thing to know, so you could like, jump down. And then uh, it'll come down as soon as I leave. There's another thing you can go into. Yep, and here's the typical fanfare. There is a, another stop and swap egg in here as well. It was on the bed. Ooh, look at that. Nine gold feathers. You get another jiggy in here. Yeah, Rusty Bucket Bay is always typically on the lowest, like, least liked stage of the game, which I totally get. I do not like the stage either. I mean, it's just the engine room. It really is just kind of the engine room that really makes this stage miserable. Back. Come on, piss off. But even still, it's like, the, the water is a pain to navigate through. Like, the double air thing is just, like, not nice at all. There's so many little areas as well in this game, or in this level, that you can end up missing a note. And, and it's just, like, definitely one of those things where it's like, missing a note in this stage sucks. I wouldn't even know where to begin to look, basically. Oh. Bam, bam. 
two left. We have the Jinjo one, and then we also have a boss fight. And uh, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna activate this. Because I'm already here, why not? And we can also get the Jinjo as well. Just jump down. Same as before, we got some notes here. We have five left. And I know exactly where they are. Hopefully there's five. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to race against the, the clock on that one. Yeah, we're gonna go over here to get the final Jinjo. Are you kidding me? I even did the move! Wow, this sucks. Ah, man. I blame the game. He was supposed to come out earlier. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the outside stuff first so that I can just jump directly into the boss when I'm finished. Get the remaining get the remaining notes that are over here. Is there five or are there only four? Are you kidding me? Again. Oh, oh my gosh, why am I missing notes? This sucks. Oh my god, where the hell could it be? It's not in there, is it? Oh no. How come I'm missing notes? Like, they're always in bunches. Again, like, I really don't have an idea as to where it could be. Unless if it's, like, over here, and then I fell, but I don't think there's notes over here. Yeah, I don't know where it could be. Maybe the kitchen. Okay, so... Okay, so maybe the kitchen, it could be... On the... Shit. Hold on, I gotta take a break for a second here. Okay. And we're back. Just had to take a break for a second. I think I do know where it is. I think I know exactly where it is. I started thinking about it because I think it was the... It's either it was like right there on the red spot there or it could be on the other side. But it's not, so... I'm gonna guess it's in the kitchen, I think... I think it's beside the fridge. I'm hoping, please, please be there. It is! Ha ha! I knew it! <laughs> so I had to like visualize the whole stage for a second and be like, okay, where, where could they have one? Like, out of all the, the notes, where could a note be that I could have missed? And... That's where I figured. <laughs> Uh, 
All right. So the only thing left to do is we gotta hit that witch switch and then we gotta fight the boss. Okay, so I'm absolutely terrible when it comes to getting this. Oh. I don't know why it's always just so... It's so close to being out of reach. Okay, here we go. Oof. My doom! Okay, there's a really fast and easy way to beat this boss. And you just do this. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But I kind of recommend when they're in the smallest state... Well, I mean, I've kind of already... whatever. When they're in the smallest state, it's probably best to just... go out of the invincibility, because I, I did use a lot of... Uh, I did use a lot of feathers, and that's not very good. Okay, so I'm gonna try to collect a bunch of these eggs if I can. Oh look, I can! <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. We don't need them all. And yeah, that is Rusty Bucket Bay, hardest level in the game. To some. I think technically the hardest level in the game would have to be the last one. Because it's the longest, and to get all of the notes in that world, like seriously, if I if I if I do miss a note, I am screwed. I'm absolutely screwed. And that happened to my sister. She ended up missing one note in that world, and could not find it. So you just got to be very careful. But we'll get there when we get there. All right, so there's something I want to do in this area here. There's two things. There's two jiggies that we need to get. We might as well get them now. Ah. Yeah, we could have gotten the Freeze DZ Peak one earlier, but I wanted to... I wanted to try and get both the Freeze DZ Peak and the Mad Monster Mansion one at the same time. Yep. And these shoes run out pretty much at the exact moment when the countdown is like almost at zero. Pretty much. There you go. Uh, we're gonna get that one later because there's actually a flight pad uh, where the Freeze Easy Peak one is. So we will be able to fly to that one as well, instead of having to do the whole running thing again. Oh, there's a Mumbo token. Uh, we're not going to get it, though. Bow, bow. Yeah, Frenchie's Lair. It's a big old playground. I would have liked to have grabbed that. <laughs> I don't want to give up my flight here. Here we go. And now we can get this G2. There we go. Goo hoo! And we're gonna go over here. And there's a Jiggy that we unlocked with Rusty Bucket Bay that's gonna be up here. And also, we're gonna be able to get another Cheeto book as well. Yep, just one more left. That's going to be up temporarily. We need to hurry. Everything is going pretty well in this game so far. 
Well, okay, there there was a number of moments I hated. Like how uh the stupid crocodile minigame and of course Boggy's race was just eh. Baron Bird getting good at finding Cheeto, so another spell they shall have. That trainer book he pushed its luck. So in the burning fire I'll track. Finding Cheeto won't. Which won't. Claude, you must enter on Sandcastle Floor in Treasure Trove. It's cold. <laughs> it's, uh, gold feathers, which is very helpful. Yeah. So we need to go into this other room. We gotta do a few more things, and then I'm gonna show off the game over screen. Because it's kind of cool. Very unique. There we go. Go through here. Oh, we don't have that many gold feathers. It's actually fine because we're gonna be entering the gold feather cheat soon, so we're gonna get all of our, uh, we're gonna get them all back soon, so no big deal. We actually have enough notes to open up this door here if we wanted to go, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. We're gonna beat Quick Clockwood first, which is the stage. <laughs> oh no, I spoiled the name, no, for a game like over 20 years old. Yeah, there's a pedestal. So we could have actually accessed this area super, super, super early, but we didn't. Because there was no pedestal there. Get out of here. Alright, Gruntilda's back. Shut up. Gruesome Gruntilda's favorite pastime is bursting boils, grossed. This poor guy called Greasy Grant was her first and only boyfriend. When she was younger, Grunty used to have a mad vulture as a pet. I kind of wonder if the reference, if there was a reference with Greasy Grant, <laughs> her Grunty's boyfriend. I thought that'd be pretty funny. All right. So I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the game over screen. We're going to view this very quick and then um, and then we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff over there. <laughs> Banjo's game is in my tower. It ends in my tower. Turn it up. I need full power. Yes, you're going to ship. Transformation soon be complete. Help me, Banjo! I feel funny! Baron Bird finished. Grunty wins. <gasps> me and Grunty smoking. Look at Grunty, she's a beauty. I'm much more prettier than Tootie. I don't know. Oh, you are, mistress. Gunty, nice. Come back to Mumbo Skull, yes? <laughs> Banjo, your sister wants a word with you. Now! It's actually funny, if you look at a lot of um, rare games for the N64, like yeah, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Donkey Kong 64, obviously Conker's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> but they have some pretty, um... No, I didn't want to see the time! <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, they have some very, um, beautiful looking women. <laughs> To say the least. It's pretty funny. 
All right. I just kind of figured to show the, the, the game over screen because I'm going to be coming back here anyway and we're going to enter the codes that we got from Cheeto and we are also going to activate uh, the last level. And they're both back here, so might as well do everything all at once. And plus we're completely out of red uh, gold feathers, so we need this. Oh, it feels like such a long time. Such a long time ago since we were here. Remember when I taught you how to swim a little bit? Yeah, that was good. Talk spring jumps. Good times. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Go, come on, hurry up. Okay, so now we have to enter the words that Cheeto had given us in here. So, okay. B. L. U. Now there's some... There's some other cheat codes that you can enter. Um, there's some other cheat codes that you can enter in this game. They're like really, really long and very complicated, but they also like gives you some pretty crazy stuff. Oh, uh, F. I'm looking for F. E. Yeah, they can give you some other stuff, but the thing is, I think you can only enter so many. I think you're only allowed to enter two. Yeah, but if you try to enter another one, then, uh... L. If you try to enter another one, then the game will actually say, hey, you've entered too many codes. If you enter this, then we're going to erase your game save. And it does it. It actually does. If you enter too many codes, it completely erases your game save. I'm not too sure if it erases just that one... Uh, if it just erases that one save file, or if it erases all of them. But I, I would like to think that it erases only one of them. I mean, it would be pretty shitty if it didn't. Yeah, so we just doubled our capacity, and we also, like, maxed our capacity, which is great. Bye bye Treasure Trove Cove. I will never see you again. Maybe if I decided to do, like, a bonus episode. There's a couple of bonus things, too, but I don't really know if it's really worth doing. Oh! Nope, we're not ready to go yet. go. Let's just talk to Bruntilda first. Might as well. Ugly Grunty's nickname was Hog Breath at Witch School. I also know that sweaty gorilla feet is our favorite smell. And the old hag's favorite color is ghastly gray. Gray? Huh, weird. We can fill up this puzzle right here, super quick. Cleek, clock, wood. And there's a mumbo token in here. Okay, and because we activated that one cauldron, we'll be able to zip all the way back to Click Clock Wood. Whee! 
There we go. Many tricks are up my sleeve. To save yourself, you'd better leave. Nah, I don't think so. Click Clockwood, the final level of the game. The longest level in the game, too. Very, very annoying. So what we first have to do is activate these switches to open up each of the different seasons. So it'll have uh, basically a big set piece surrounding a... It's just one big tree and it shows off the different seasons based around that tree. It's really cool. But the one thing that makes this level difficult is getting all of the... Getting all of the notes because there's four whole different sections that are just as like they're all huge and it's just very difficult to know which notes that you're missing from which part right you may accidentally just you know forget to grab some notes in one area and then suddenly you're like oh shoot what area was it that I didn't have those notes from so I just really hope that you know my, uh, I'm currently being able to, to get all the notes because I screwed up twice already. There's a Mumbo Token. I'm gonna kind of forget about Mumbo Tokens because I think I have enough for the transformation. I think. I could be wrong. There we go. Activate the flower. Yeah, and each season has kind of like its own like item specific to it. So in this in this stage it's more about eggs. Right? Eggs kind of surround the the main tree. Although we do have some uh, notes as kind of like highlights, I guess. Woo. Yeah, I got these eggs here. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go into Mumbo's skull and we're going to do the transformation. Hopefully I have enough. I, I think I have enough. At 23... <gasps> I don't have enough. Oh my gosh, I don't have enough. <laughs> Funny. I know where one is. Oh, actually I know where two is, so we're, we're fine. I don't have to go that far for him. Uh, maybe I should have just gotten that one was in there. I can't believe I didn't have enough. I always have enough. Jeez. What is wrong with me? At least it wasn't that far. Oh. Yep, yeah. There we go. Jump! I don't want those. Here we go. I don't think that there's anything in here. Besides eggs up the top. Yeah, I think we're good. We're fine. Okay, so with the B, we're gonna go into a few areas here. There's this beehive here. We're gonna go in there. Oh no! Ah. I love it. Useless mumbo tokens. Yeah, we don't need to go out of our way to get these now. Hello, fat little bee. We zubbas are guarding Grunty's golden honey piece. We've been told there's a honey bear out there. Yep. That's me. They don't know, but it's me. I'm the bear. And that's pretty much all we get in there. It's just a Jinjo. And then another thing that we can get. Oh, it's right here. 
Another Jinjo. Ah, oh, man, I wish I could have grabbed it. There we go. And then there is also... And I'm not too sure where it is on the tree, but it is up here. There it is. Oh, shoot. It is a little bit difficult to manage this thing. There we go. We got it. Now we gotta go back. That's pretty much it. That's all you're gonna do with the bee. Except to get the... There's another... Uh, you gotta get the Jiggy and Grunty's lair with the bee. We have to leave the level once everything's finished. Bye, Bumbo. I'll see you one other time, and then I'm done. Okay. Let me cross over here. A part of me kind of wishes that I know how many... Like, I would have been able to, like, go from spring... Oh, what the hell? Like, I knew how many Gs were in each section and how much you would be left off with after you've completed it. I don't I don't have those numbers. I don't know what they are. I, I really wish, after all the playthroughs I've done, I really wish I'd kept the count on it. So that's just a gold feather there. Gold feather. What else? Mbo token. Don't need it. I don't think there's anything over there. We would have seen it with the B. <laughs> I am trying to speed it up because this this stage can take a while, and uh, I also kind of want to be a little more confident with how I perceive the level and stuff like that. Like, yeah, Mumbo Token don't need to get that. Most of the th like going up in spring, there's really not that much else. There is. There's just a few things that you need to do, like hitting the switch. I don't even think we need to go into Nabnut's house here. It's a little squirrel that lives here. But I'm gonna check just in case because I'm not 100% sure. Fish Nabnut. Chomp Joe Nabnut like acorns. I'll just eat a few more. Yeah. Another useless Mumbo token. Nothing in here. And that window just leads back into that room, so... Mumbo token. I got this big egg here. Me eerie, mighty eagle, need sleep now. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite uh, jiggies to get in the game. You got to come back and you got to feed the eagle. It was like every, it was like a task with every season, pretty much. Oof. And also, what's really cool is that as the seasons change, like, the area kind of gets more and more built. Right, so like, the this, this stage would be a little bit more completed. It wouldn't be as dangerous. Now something I always forget about this room is that there's literally just the Jiggy and I think some, uh, like, one-ups or something like that. But like, that's it. There's nothing else. Um, let me try to... There's that. I kind of want to go around to where the entrance is. It's over there. Here we go. If we push it just at the right time, we should be good. And we are. I think that's it. That's it for spring. 
Moving on to summer. Summer is probably my least favorite of these seasons. Spring, because it's... I don't know, pretty standard, I guess. Eerie, hungry now! Need five caterpillars! But summer kind of sucks because the water is drained out of that one area. Yeah, we gotta collect some caterpillars. And this season it's uh, feathers. Gotta be tons of feathers that we can find. We need to go down here. I didn't get to see him in spring because I passed by him pretty quick, but uh, we got a little beaver here. He can open up his house. And it's kind of cool too because these this is a naughty that was used uh, like in Donkey Kong Country, right? Those beavers, little beaver enemies that we've seen. He's one of them. He's one of them. And then we have the fall button. We can just go into fall directly if we wanted to, but of course we're not. I think fall is probably the longest season. I think it probably takes the longest to get through. Uh, summer is also kind of, again, summer is kind of annoying. <laughs> but winter is super quick. Yeah, winter is super quick, because you can actually fly in that stage. They have some flight pads you can use, which is great. I don't think they have anything on the in-betweens. Nope. Oh, there's- okay, there's just a caterpillar here. Wanna make this jump? I'd hate to fall in there and have to walk all the way back. Yeah, Gobi's here, and we're gonna take his water from him. Because we got a plant to grow. Will you stop doing that? It took me ages to find that water. Ah, we're mean. And we hate Gobi. It's unanimous, we all hate Gobi, right? <laughs> He's done literally nothing bad to us. And yet we hate him. Okay, here, oof. And we're just gonna try to get to Mumbo's place. I don't, again, I don't, okay, there's Caterpillar here. So I guess it is worth it. We got our five. Hey, Mumbo. Too hot for magic, Mumbo wants suntan. Well then go outside then. My useless Mumbo tokens. It is nice that they have a lot of extra mumbo tokens. I'm also kind of glad that the game doesn't tally it, so that it's like, oh, it's also a part of your 100% run to get all the mumbo tokens. Don't have to deal with that nonsense. Yep, mumbo token. And we are gonna go over here. There's a bunch of leaves that Take us all the way up to a Jiggy. I'm pretty sure you can also do this in Fall, but Fall's leaves are a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit harder to do. I don't think you can do it in Spring. Here we go. Just climbing up this tree again. That is probably one of the more annoying aspects of this stage, is just how many times you have to climb up this tree. And there's a caterpillar. We want to collect as many as we can, because they're also used in the next season. Yeah, there really aren't that many notes in this season. But the next season is going to change that, because there's tons. Oh. 
Well, honey, actually, shut up. Just come at me. <laughs> yeah, to make this so much easier on you, you want to use the invincibility and they just kill themselves. Bizarre. He's beating us. Oh, well. We were getting bored of guarding it anyway. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it. Up, up, up we go. Oh. There we go. There we go. Kind of reminds me of the thing that we had to do in order to get the one, uh, the egg in Treasure Trove Cove. Now, I've hated doing this jiggy so much, because, like, getting over to it is, is no big deal. But, and this is a, this is a big butt. <laughs> getting back is really hard, because we have to get back onto that plank. So, I don't know if I can... Oh my gosh! That killed me. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. We're good. That's very hard to do. Ah. Alright, let's check out Nab Nut, see what he's got in here. Oh, he's fat now. Oh, it's just feathers. Yeah, so Nabnut eat, ate all of his acorns that he was saving for winter. So he screwed himself. Not much we can do about that. <laughs> well, that's how you learn lessons, right? Okay, we got that worm or caterpillar. I've always hated this section with these stupid birds here. Especially this one, because like this platform is a little bit thinner than the others. Okay, here we go. Yummy! The Joshi caterpillar is nice. We just have to wait around until he eats them all. Every full now needs more sleep. There we go. Sleep tight, my little dumpling. Sleep tight. <laughs> Eerie is precious. I'm not even sure if I need to come up here. Is there a reason? No, there is not. Um... Yeah, let's just go back. We're pretty much gonna have to jump off where we were before to get back to the entrance. But yeah, spring wasn't too bad. It's fall. Fall's gonna... Shit. Good. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay. I thought it was going to take some damage, at least. But we's all good. Go, 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 go. Alright, fall. Fall is the season of music notes. Bear got airy more caterpillars. Need ten this time. Yeah, he's gonna have to have a lot more caterpillars this time around. And we can give it to him. Okay. Yeah, so let's go get all of these notes here. That way we don't have to, like, wrap around. We're pretty much gonna take the same route as we always have. Oh, there's another caterpillar. Oop. 
Yep, gonna try to collect as many caterpillars as I can. Oof. Okay, there's that. And we're gonna go over here. Because now we can actually access Naughty's hole. <laughs> His little indent in the in the tree here. Or whatever the hell, <laughs> the hell am I saying? Oof. This stupid thing. Get up here. Yeah, there's just two notes there. We got ourselves a jiggy here. Bye! <laughs> yeah, if you actually, um... You might think, like, hey, what if I just go back, like, without unlocking Autumn, would you be able to go back into Spring? Because the water is in Spring, you'd be able to get to his, his, uh, his, his home. But the fact is you can't actually do that. Because it does just kind of work chronologically-ish. It's like this tree, or, uh, oh, there it is. This plant would still be there, but Naughty's home is like always covered by a boulder every season, I guess. Every every spring it's always covered by a boulder. It's pretty funny. Ish. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm off to the lava world. You'll never find me there. So initially there was going to be a, uh, a lava world in Banjo-Kazooie. I think they had to cut it out for time, but they put it back into the game uh, in Banjo-Tooie, and that stage is Hellfire Peaks, and that is where uh, Gobi tries to get to. Um, he is actually found in a different world where you have to free him, and then and then you can take your uh, make your way to Hellfire Peaks. That's where he'll be. Oh, got the Jiggy, so whatever, I don't care. Oof. Did I go up here? Yeah, I did, okay. This... I'm not too worried about the... Uh, the gold feathers anymore. I don't think there's really that much of a situation where you're gonna need them. Two more, two more caterpillars. Mm, one more caterpillar. Mumbo busy, sweep many leaves. It's good to come in here so we can get these notes up here. Look at that, 64. Like Nintendo 64. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Yep. Completing this season is good. Uh, it's the longest, definitely. And this winter is like super, super quick. There we go. Oof. Almost fell. 69! Woo! Okay. What else is there? Okay, there is a caterpillar. Okay, so we got all the caterpillars. We don't have to worry about them anymore. I hate how big those things get. Jeez.
So pretty much the only thing in here are some notes. And some notes. And we go up the tree some more. And there's pretty much nothing else but with this little tree house. Oh, they give you a bunch of caterpillars. Can you swing, please? What are you doing? Cameras. Oof, I hate these things so much. I've been knocked off this stupid tree so many times with those stupid things. Alright, let's not talk to Nabnut. We know what he wants. He wants his acorns. He ate them all. <laughs> we'll find one in here. It's just in the bottom of the water. He wants six of them. I don't know how he's going to survive winter with just six acorns, but okay. Oh, nope. Wrong one. I feel so incomplete now that we're missing one egg. There we go. There's another one here. Gotta be super careful. Crazy Robin Hood man. Come on. <laughs> He's like practically inside it. Alright, now we want to go inside of Nabnut's house, because he actually kept one inside. The dingus. Now we get some notes, that's good. 76 notes. And we can give him his nuts. Kind of like the same situation here as the bird. Gotta wait it out. Yippee! That's all the acorns I need. Here, take this. I'll see you in spring. Yes, but I'll be seeing you in winter. Not to be creepy or anything, but I will see you in winter. Yeah. I knew that was gonna happen. Oh my god, why is the timing so off sometimes? Man, that really ticks me off. Ugh. All the way back there again. I don't know why. Sometimes it feels like this game's a little off sync or something. Because, like, nine times out of ten, I'm able to make that jump, no problem. I'm able to, like, I know when they're, they're coming out. But then, like, they come out early or something. Like that. Like, I'm nowhere near it. Why is it even coming out? So stupid. I get frustrated. <laughs> I get frustrated because it's like, you know, you, you play a game so many times, you kind of have an idea of how everything works and when things will happen. And, and when it doesn't line up how you think it will, it's just... This is really annoying. We gotta sit here for a while before we can give all the caterpillars in. Taken forever! Thank you, Bear! You're a zombie big bird! Must have sleep first! Aww. 
You're so precious. Let's see if some more stuff's up here. Probably not. But we're actually right underneath where we need to be. Okay, so there's a, a mumbo token and a, and a caterpillar, so we don't need to worry about that right now. So hopefully I get enough distance here. Oof, almost missed it. Yeah, so we need to jump down here and get the get the jiggy that we had. We got two more left. We got uh one of them is Hmm. Oh. Well, one of them is... Oh yeah, Eerie and the Jinjo. That's it. Eerie and the Jinjo. And then we're all good to go. And we have to get the... There's an empty... Uh, there's two empty honeycomb pieces we still need, actually. Uh, but we both get them... We get both of them in winter. So that's no problem. And like I said, winter is like super quick. Because it's like as soon as you get everything that you need, it's like you just leave. You don't have to worry about scouring the whole level inside and out like I had to in the other ones. Okay. We also get the return of these goddamn snowmen. Oof. Here we go. We're gonna get the Jinjo Jiggy here. Jinjo! There we go. Nice. We can hit those snowmen if we want, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> So pretty much what we're going to do is just scatter, not scatter, scour the level for the notes that I'm missing. And one of the notes that I'm, I know with some of the notes are up here. This is always a pain because you could easily fall off and die. You have to do a very quick change there. 88. Uh, I'm actually a little bit worried about the note situation. Because I'm, I, I'm always very unsure when it comes to to winter where everything is. Because it happens so fast. <laughs> okay, let's go check out Nabnut in here. Let's break his window open and let all the cold air in. Mmm, acorns. Yeah, so this would be where another stop and swap egg it would appear right here. See, I knew I'd see him in spring. Or, uh, winter. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna ignore these stupid snowmen. Okay, and we're gonna be missing eight so far. Ooh. I'm not 100% sure where they all are. I feel like I did miss some. Okay, there. I know there's some over here, but... I feel like there must be another area in here that I missed them. Here, mighty eagle at last! Watch me fly into the sky! Yay! There goes Eerie. I have reward for Bear, friend! Here it comes! There we go, we get the last Jiggy of the Bok Woods! But we don't have all the notes yet, so we're not out of the woods. And I still need to get both of the empty honeycomb pieces, which one of them I definitely know that I'm gonna have to get. I definitely know that I'm gonna have to get. Uh... Come on, get over. Last. It'll be the very last thing I do, or at least until I get all the notes. Um, I'm trying to figure out where the hell the last... Oh, it's over here. They're over here. I think. Yes. Yes, they are. Good. Ooh. 
No. Wow, okay, I didn't fall. Good. Get on me. Here we go, and the last one. All right, so let's go get the empty honeycomb pieces and we will be able to leave. And the first one is over here. Gotta hit this. Oh, sh this is a very. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a very annoying one to get. Um, I don't think you have to do the beak bomb to open it. Okay, I'm not gonna do it anymore. I don't wanna die. So, what you can do is this. Oh, shit, I'm an idiot. Ugh. You're looking good for me. It's such an annoying thing to get. Let me get some health. Oh no. Wow, okay, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, man? I almost died so easy. Oh my gosh, that was so crazy. Ugh. That was so scary. <laughs> I can't believe I just, like, bounced off that guy. Ugh. Okay. That was enough excitement. Can I please just get this stupid thing? <sighs> oh my gosh, that scared me. Okay. Okay, let's try to open this stupid thing. <laughs> Fine. Clearly I can't do it today, so... <sighs> okay, we go on top. And then do this. I pushed the wrong button last time, but that at least helps us get into it so we can fly into it. <clears throat> what the hell is with this game right now? Man, why is this game trying to kill me so easily? You know, literally having a no-death run so far, I mean, again, technically I did game over, but that was my own volition. And to have it almost, like, broken up because of some stupid snowmen. <sighs> so dumb. I've never had this much trouble before with this stupid thing. I feel like there's a lot of firsts in this playthrough. Ugh. And it's just for a stupid empty honeycomb piece. I'm at least glad that I got all of the notes, so if I do die, it's like, whatever. But, ugh. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah, the witch switch. I kind of forgot about that. Ugh. Why do they always hurt me? Okay, we're gonna hit the witch switch last. I I really should have done it now. Shit. Whatever. Whatever game. Make me do things weirdly out of order. Okay, so this is where the next empty honeycomb piece is. We gotta go back to Naughty's home. Yeah, this is very dangerous. Don't don't try to do this unless you have all of the notes, because look at that. Two two um two air. And there we go. Now we have all of our health back. We don't have to worry about that. Of course we're gonna have to fly to go get the to go get the uh witch switch. Kind of a cool detail that you don't really notice is 
on Kazooie's, uh, like, because we're in the frozen water, it kind of looks like Kazooie gets, um... Oh, shit. I think I'm gonna die. If I don't immediately... Wow, this is it. This is how I die. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I guess there was a death in this run. That sucks. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> really? Game, you can just let me have a no death of my own volition? They can just put me right under the water. Just yank me right to the bottom of the thing. <laughs> I don't know, some weird way I kind of feel like that's actually a faster way to get back out. <laughs> but whatever. You know what? I'm getting my like, revenge on these dicks. There. That's the final jiggy of the game. Ugh. Stupid snowmen. Stupid air thing. At least I didn't try to go get it when I didn't have all my notes, so... There you go. Okay, now we gotta go back to spring, get the B transformation, and go get the final jiggy. hit me. <laughs> like, what? Okay. I don't want the boots. I'm good. Almost there. Almost done. Almost done. Come on. Yeah, Click Clock Woods is a pain. I that pisses me off how it just knocked me in the water like that. Like, really? Like, couldn't it, like, submerge me, but, like, closer to where it was instead of having to make be all, like, super, like, underneath the water? Eh. Whatever. I'm salty. I'm very salty right now. Like, the fact that I survive freaking Rusty Bucket Bay, and then I die in such a stupid manner like that. There we go. And yep, we have all the jiggies in the game. We have all the notes. And uh, we're on our way to go defeat the witch. Go, go, go. Whoa, big surprise! Welcome all! Grunty's the name! Banjo's here to play my game! My lair is done, and here he stands! Throw all my tricks and traps and lands! This final test will see me win! When Banjo fails, then I'll be thin! The prizes on the stand will bring joy from Tootie down to Cuddle Toy! My little quiz will make you sweat, and Tootie will, you shall never get! Cause somewhere soon along the way, your lack of skill will make my day! Cause in the fiery pit you'll go, and I will win the prize on show. So step on over to the square, press A if, to try it if you dare. Yeah, so we gotta do a little game show here, which quizzes all of the information uh, about the game. Uh, that's a cauldron for basically after the minigame here. In the wood for the plant to grow, what in the ground must you sow? An egg. So we shot eggs in that little thing. Do the picture on my screen, do you know where you have been? I, I thought it glitched out and wasn't going to show us. Um, I have an idea. That's Clanker's... Yeah, Clanker's Cavern, okay. In the treasure trove, you need quick legs. Which of my nasties ate your eggs? 
That is Yum Yum the Clam. I didn't actually show that off, but uh, if you get hit by that clam that was in Treasure Trove Cove, he'll steal your stuff. Which character has this dumb voice? That's Mumbo. Mumbo Jumbo the Shaman. Humbo Wumba the Shaman. That's so interesting that they have that there because a uh, character Humbo Wumba is in Banjo Tooie. Listen up, now make your choice. Which character has this dumb voice? That's Brentilda, isn't it? Yeah. The ugly fairy godmother. <laughs> so, completing that square gives us some Joker cards, which allows us to skip squares if we want to. Ah, uh, that's Treasure Trove Cove. It's the lighthouse. Actually, it could be Click Clock Wood. Oh. I was thinking the door that's at the top of the... of the thing. Gobi's camel is on vacation. What's he got at his third location? There's an extra honeycomb piece. He was in the doorway of... Uh... I'm gonna skip this. This actually plays a minigame. Um, which the minigames are kind of annoying. Look at my build. Muscles taut. What's my most enjoyable sport? Uh, that was Loogie flicking, wasn't it? So yeah, all of the information that that Bruntilda gave us that we were looking for, that actually helps us with grunty squares. Mentioned cellar barrels are round. What's on the front of them was found. It was the numbers 1881. If I actually got that question wrong, it would have thrown me right into the fiery doom. Remember now before you lose, what type of toothpaste do I use? It was, um... Shit, uh... Tuna? <gasps> Oof. I have the answers right here, I just don't have it- Oh, it's moldy cheese flavored. Oh, I didn't mean to skip it, shit! <laughs> oh well, whatever. See the picture on my screen, do you know where you have been? That is a Gobi's Valley. Here we go. The rusty bucket is a tanker. What's stuck underneath its anchor? That is a dolphin. Scary. Listen up, now make your choice. Which character has this dumb voice? I think that's either... I think that's Mott's hand. Or no, okay, Napper the Sleeping Ghost. They both kind of sound the same, don't they? Ah, uh, this sucks. I wanted to skip this. Oh, well, this is fine. I'm okay with this. Yeah, we're basically having to defeat all of the bees here again. We're just gonna do the same tactic as last time. Literally can't do it faster than that. <laughs> Tell me now, or your life I'll chomp. The frog's name in Bubble Goop Swamp. Those are flippets. Or flibbits. See the picture on my screen? Do you know where you have been? That is Clanker's Cavern. That's inside of Clanker, I think. Looking at his teeth. You want to hear us? I can tell. Which band did I sing so well? It's Grunty and the Boomstrick Boys. Boomstrick. <laughs> Boomstick. A blubble fish who's really, uh, Clanker, what's his name? So that's a bloop. Or is it gloop? It could be... Oh wow, I got it wrong. It was a gloop. What's the name of the squirrel in spring? Oh, what's he doing in spring? So yeah, he's eating. We didn't wash, there was no pool. Where did I go to which school? That was St. Dungbells. Yeah. If I didn't get Bruntilda to tell me some answers, I probably could have died there. That looks like Mad Monster Mansion. I didn't actually show you the top of the well, uh, but we went inside of it as the pumpkin. 
Listen up, now make your choice. Which character has this dumb voice? I think that's one of the polar bear kids. <laughs> the mummy orchestra. Alright, so we got some more cards if we need them. Fat Hag Monthly thinks I'm hot. What did I do on the cover shot? Let's polish the crystal ball. Listen carefully to the tune. Which world's it from, you furry goon? That's Treasure Trove Cove. Now we're gonna do this mini game. Oh no! I'm gonna skip this if I fail it. This sucks. Oh great, he gets a nice head start on me. But at least... Whatever, grab the stupid things. At least this time I'll be a little bit faster. I didn't even... Didn't even... Oof. Wow, what a terrible start. Has to be expected from me, I suppose. I didn't even... He just does it on his own. Well, at least, Mr. yeah, Mr. Vile's taking it easy on me, I guess. I guess having the running shoes kind of has its own problems. Come on, really? Oof. Really? Come on, grab him, grab him, grab him. He was just about to grab that last one. I got so lucky, oh my gosh. <laughs> Here's three facts about the Rusty Bay. Pick one that's true today. The engine room has four cogs. The ship has three funnels. There are four light boats. Okay, we're gonna skip that. <laughs> I cannot lie, I tell the truth. What's hanging from my bedroom roof? The dirty undies. Gross bastard. And skip. <laughs> no one can win, I was assured by the makers of this board. It's not fair, I want to win. How lie long to be real thin. Now you could take the prize on show, well up the winding stairs I go. You won't catch me, I've made sure. All the credits you'll now endure. Yeah, so now we gotta wait through some credits. <laughs> Which prize should we take, Kazooie? Me, 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 me. Um, how about that grotty ugly thing? I think we should take Tootie. That's what I meant. Zooey. Please, can we go home now, Banjo? I've had enough adventuring for one day. Sure, let's get out of this dump. Yep. So now we get to sit through some credits, and uh, I think for the time being, I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. And uh, you can endure the credits, not me.
Ah, here we go. And bake. And bake. Yeah, so, uh, that's Banjo Kazooie. I beat the game. And, uh, you know, totally don't have to beat Grunty in this game. Absolutely not. I mean, you, you'll see. The characters know. They, they'll know. They'll tell you. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so I feel like this playthrough is kind of a bit better than the last ones, but at the same time a lot worse because I died, or not, well, yeah, I did die in a really stupid spot, but it was, uh, <laughs> like, when you when you resurface, you shouldn't be able to be pushed down by the ice surrounding it. Like, that's ridiculous. Because that's exactly what happened. Like, I just, like, I surfaced, and then I guess I got pushed down by the ice. It was really stupid. Um, but yeah, Rusty Bucket Bay, I'm glad that I, f I realized that I could just use invincibility to jump through the fans, because I never, I never tried doing that before, and I'm like, you know, could that work? <laughs> And it's like, yeah, it's, it does work. It works really well. So if I ever have to do this stupid playthrough again, hopefully we won't have to do that. Hopefully. Oh my god, please. Please. I don't want to have to do this again. It takes so long. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, what do I think about Banjo Uh, as I mentioned probably throughout this video, I love this game a lot. I am... We're gonna play Banjo 2 at some point. Uh, it is a much longer game, so I'm kind of wondering when the best time to do that is. But yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be some time. It's gonna be some time, and it's not gonna be in one run. Absolutely not. It is going to be split into parts. It is so. It's such a long game. Um, and I'm also thinking of playing Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts as well after Banjo Tooie. So who knows how long it'll take before we actually get to those guys? But. Uh, you know, definitely going to be playing them, 100%. And, uh, you know, as for other platformers that I want to play, yeah, Psychonauts is going to be a game I want to play too. Uh, I'm going to play that at some point. Uh, maybe Jack and Daxter, maybe Ratchet and Clank. Um, a Hat in Time we're definitely going to be doing. Definitely going to be doing that one, that's great. Um, what other ones would be good? Yeah. Oh, Donkey Kong 64. I think I mentioned that in the Donkey Kong Country review. Or not review. <laughs> in the Donkey Kong Country video that we're going to be playing. We're definitely going to be playing Donkey Kong 64. But uh, yeah, that'll definitely be split up into parts as well. Because it's, it's quite a long game to get through. Hmm. You know, sometimes I do kind of wonder what would have happened if Nintendo had just bought the Banjo-Kazooie license. And instead of it being carried over into Microsoft. Hurry up, Bunch out, we're gonna get home. I'm going as fast as I can. Hey, right, look over there! We missed the carrot. Goldium! Are you happy now? Come on, you two! We're ready to party! Great! I could do with a drink. See, look, they're partying. Game's done. Barbecue! Baron Bird did good. Oh, Mumbo beat Witch. Uh, you didn't do any... Well, I mean, they, they helped. Yeah, but they needed my amazing moves to do it. Now we're all of me and Banjo. We're stars of this game. What's the party for? Crunchy got away. So get back up there and finish the job. Boom. I'm not going. Oh, yes you are. Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, we have a witch to beat. So strange. Alright, so that's pretty much the only thing left we have to do in the game is to defeat Gruntilda. And a really amazing boss fight. Oh, it's gonna be a good time. Oh, there's the cauldron. All the way back at the... Furnace Fun. And... So this actually costs 810 notes. I think I mentioned it earlier, but yeah, you do have to go into every single level. 
and that. Shut up, Grunty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad to I'm sad to say down there you'll stop. Because I'm safe here at the top. Yeah, so this is the room with the uh the ugly machine. The 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 beauty swapping machine, I guess. And uh it's kinda cool that they add this here. Now this door has always intrigued me and uh, a lot of other Banjo kazooie players. Because it, it really feels like you could go through that door. And uh, I even tried, it was a Game Shark code that allows you to open doors. We like push a button and you would go up to like anything that opens, it would open. And this door actually gets affected by that. So it's, it's really strange. It's almost like that door could open. So. Okay, so we have six Jiggies left over, meaning you need 96 Jiggies to complete the game. Right? Oh, <laughs> I didn't really mean to open this quite yet. But yeah, we have a whole bunch of uh, extra note doors that we can open, and they refill our supply. Right? So we got this one, we got another one over here. Fills up our red feathers, we did use quite a bit of them in the last stage. And then we also have this door here, 828, to get some blue eggs. But then there's one more door, and oh, we don't even need that. There's one more door right here. I want to see how much it costs. 882. So you can only miss... 8, 10, 18. You can only miss 18, but this is a very, very special door as it gets us access to an extra puzzle that we can reuse some of our remaining Jiggies on. Four of them. In completing it, it will give us extra life. So we have double life. That pretty much ensures our victory against Gruntilda. Very, very helpful. Ooh, what a disgusting smell. Oh, visitors from Digpot. I like visitors. Also, I wonder you get on the sewer broth. Oh, what does that strange birdie thing mean? Uh, she said that we're looking for Gruntilda. Do you know where she is? Oh, uh, sure you do, Mr. Bear. Grunty's awful to me, you know. She was sick of me earlier on. If you can get rid of her, I'll be free. Don't be so sure, you silly pot. Soon I'll have you nice and hot. See these filthy clothes I've got? When you're one, I'll f wash the lot. Don't worry, Dingpot. We'll sort her out if we can find a way up there. No problem. Just push on in and I'll fire you up to the top. Jump on there? No, roll the dung box. Come on, Kazooie. You got a chance to pick the witch's butt. Let's go. What a reward, picking an old, gross, grotty witch's butt. But here we go. The final battle. I can't believe you furry bear got right up here. It's so unfair. But now that stupid bear must fight. This battle tests your skill and might. Absolutely. Uh, this is actually a very, very epic battle in my opinion. I, I love this fight so much. Uh, when I was a kid, I'd be like jumping up and down during this fight. There's a little trick that you can get Grunty to the next phase super quick. Ah, on this one, shit. That kind of sucks, but whatever. Yeah, you shoot some eggs at her. Normally you just kind of like, you know, peck her butt, but it's so much easier with the eggs. And it's funny because I didn't even watch a, like a speedrunning video to teach me that. It was actually my sister. I watched my sister play the game and she was doing that and I'm like, what? This is very dangerous as, um, she can knock you backwards. And, uh, it'll do, like, knockback, and sometimes it knocks you, like, it does a knockback, but it's forward. Ah, shit. I screwed up my timing here. That was dangerous. Uh, got her. Yeah, you want to try to get over here as quick as you can and start firing the eggs. 
so that she doesn't have an opportunity to attack. There you go. And already we're on to the next phase where we gotta fly. This is easily my favorite phase. This is so cathartic hitting hitting her right from the sky. <laughs> if I can actually hit her. <laughs> Usually I'm a lot better at this, but today I guess I'm off. There we go. Yeah, don't really be afraid of her fireballs. They're not that big a deal. Oh, I missed. Like, they'll hit you, but they won't knock you out of the sky. Let's go here. Oh, I thought she was gonna move. I think she's too early in the phase to start moving so quick. Wow, I'm... a little bit everywhere right now. Ooh, if I clipped that, I could've died. <laughs> I'm not taking it very safe right now. Go here. There we go. Right in the face. Oof. Yeah, it doesn't knock you out of the sky, so it just it's not that big a deal to, to take a hit. Ah, oh, she moved just a little bit later than I hoped. Ugh. Wow, I'm preempting it way too early. Wow, really? There we go. One more should do it. Oh, I was hoping to get a quick one. Ah. Oh my gosh. Like the skin of their teeth, man. Right here. Really? It was just cut so short. I don't think I've... <laughs> so many play... so many... It's like... It's like the universe knows, okay, this is the final time he's doing this. We gotta make it as hard as... hard as possible. <laughs> make him screw up on the stupidest stuff. There we go. I may be old and rather wide, but underneath the spell I'll hide. Okay, so an easy way to help dodge her shots is that she likes to lead them. We're setting us free when Jinjo's come to help our friend Banjo. Paid you well for being bad. Don't help the bear, you'll make me mad. We go. That's not fair. I wasn't ready. Jinjos make me up so unsteady. It kind of makes me feel like there was like a like greater lore when it comes to the Jinjos. Like there's some super all powerful beings or whatever. But in Banjo Kooi, they kind of um. They kind of take that away from them, I think, by... Well, we'll get into that, I guess, when banjo Kui comes around. Yeah, she starts leading her shots pretty pretty bad, so do you want to fake her out every time that happens? I bet you thought I'd got beat, but look, I've landed on my feet! It's like so obvious what she's doing, <laughs> but it also kind of makes it hard to adjust a bit, I guess. Why did you hit her? Oh my god, failure. What's all this? How dare you cheat? But I don't care, I can't be beat. Kind of the best way to do this section is to, yeah, wait for that attack, her little homing attack, and then, uh, 
start firing. But because I have so much health, and there's just no way I'm gonna lose this. I can just eat the damage. Oh my god. Still stands no chance. I'm firmly rooted in this stance. The last Jinjo has finished me, but who laughs last? We shall soon see. You missed. I don't know if it's just me, but I think the dialogue for Grunty changes. Like, I could have sworn that her dialogue was a little bit di different than that. It has to have changed. <laughs> like, having to beat the game back to back to back to back like that, I just noticed changes like that. Green. <laughs> <laughs> Too heavy! <gasps> Grunty's fate, this should not be! So hurry, Klungo, rescue me! Nope, you're gonna be trapped under that rock for at least two years. <laughs> and there it is! We finally beat the game! For the third time! <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's been such a pain, but whatever. I'm okay. It's fine. It's fine. I like this game. I do it. I do it for the game. I do it for you. Whoa, it's Captain Blubbers. Way. Check out that girl in the back. Man, she's got some sweet melons. I don't know why they added this. Why did they do that? You know, this game actually has some pretty good jiggle physics. Anyway, uh... Oh, this is great! Have you finished now, Tootie? Can I relax? Sure, Banjo! You and Kazooie are heroes now. Did you hear that, Shorty? I'm a hero! Hmm, yes, I suppose you are. Well done, Kazooie! Thanks, Goggles. You're not so dumb after all. Thanks enough, Kazooie. Let's all watch the cast list now. Yep. So we're gonna go through the cast list. Uh, like, continue the cast list. So, um... I think this is a good spot to kind of go over my thoughts on the game and everything else for it. So, yeah, Banjo-Kazooie, I love this game. <laughs> How many times have I said that? Uh, this game is fantastic. It's got great platforming. And I'd say the one thing that really bothers me is sort of like the legacy that this game has. You see, like, B Banjo Kazooie came out like a few years after Super Mario 64. And the way that people carry on about Super Mario 64 and like say that like it's the best Mario game, uh, you know, the controls are so good and all that stuff like that. Like, Super Mario 64 is just absolutely beloved by so many people. And the thing that kind of weirds me out is that like banjo kazooie was completely it was completely uh uh what do you call it <laughs> inspired by super mario 64 like i i heard somewhere that the creators they saw super mario 64 and they were like you know this is the future of games and we need to make our game similar to this and so they had to like redesign banjo kazooie change it up quite a bit um in order to you know, kind of suit what Super Mario 64 was doing. And that's how we got the game that we have today. And whenever I look at this game and compare it to Super Mario 64, it's like... This game... does pretty much what that game does, but better, right? I look at banjo Kazooie and I feel like this game is better than Super Mario 64. And 
so in turn, it's almost like Banjo Kazooie was on par with Mario, right? And that is kind of crazy, especially with the legacy that Mario has, and that you know Banjo Kazooie was right there. They were right next to it. They were on par with them. And to see the series just become so obscure, right? To fall into obscurity the way that it has, it, it really, it really makes me upset. I guess. <laughs> Because it really didn't deserve that. Mar like, Banjo Kazooie deserves more, right? It should be a re reoccurring series. It should have more games in its series. Like, there are some game series out there that I feel like don't really deserve the sequels that they get. And yet, for some reason, Banjo Kazooie just can't get another one. And that's why I'm really hoping that, you know, maybe in the future we'll hear an announcement that maybe there'll be another Banjo Kazooie game coming out. Right? You, li you look at the response that they got from, uh, my eyebrow, what are you doing? <laughs> um, you look at the responses from Banjo Kazooie being in Smash Brothers, and you can't help but be excited. Like, you know, maybe there will be. There's a really good chance that there could be another game in the series. And not to mention the merchandise. Like, there's tons of merch. So if you're like a big Banjo Kazooie fan, go out, buy some of the Banjo Kazooie merch. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's on the on their rare on the rare site. They sell some merch on the Fan Gamer site. They sell it there too. Uh, I bought a few things myself because uh, I just want to support the series. I want to do whatever I can to uh, to show there that there really is interest in this series. Again, like I, like I would say this right now that if they made another Banjo Kazooie game, like if it was under the contingency that if they made another Banjo Kazooie game that I could never play another Mario game for the rest of my life. I would honestly do it. <laughs> I would I would honestly make that I would make that choice because that's how just how much I love the series and I love the characters. I love the humor. Uh, I love the designs. You get these like goofy uh, you know, like the googly eyes. They like to put on pretty much everything. I think that's so much fun. Uh, you know, I like the different moves that you get and how it interacts with the environment. Uh, you know, the different puzzles that you have to solve as well. Like, there's so many different set pieces and things to do in each level that it just feels... It feels fresh. It does feel fresh. Uh, much more fresh than things that we're getting these days, at least. I think this game really does hold up, and, you know, if you haven't played Banjo-Kazooie, I really suggest that you give it a try. You know, get the Xbox Live Arcade version, that's probably the best version. You know, better HD graphics, and you also get... Uh, you don't have to worry about like dying and losing a lot of progress with your notes so that's something that uh, to keep in consideration but uh yeah <laughs> yeah i kind of like how it has this sort of like you know, almost somewhat childish nature to the games but they also have i, I wouldn't really say horror but you know definitely Definitely the creepy atmosphere through the game, especially through Grunty's lair. And, um, you know, even these enemy designs, you've got these big teeth, it's kind of creepy. And of course the music design too, I mean, like the uh, the theme that you that happens whenever you go into the water in Treasure Trove Cove, right? When the, when the shark appears, you've got that kind of like Jaws-inspired theme that plays, it's very creepy. Yeah. Yeah, this game is really good. And uh, I hope that... I hope we see that. I hope we see more. I really do. <sighs> There's Cheeto! It's the lady with the melons again! Oh my god! Best reward of the game! If you look really closely, you could see Jiggle Physics at work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mumbo got secret pictures. This one, Bone Broom. What's on them? Got pictures of things you missed. Secrets used the next game. Ooh, did you hear that, Kazooie? We're gonna be in a new game. In another game. Well, so let's see the pictures then, Skirt Boy. Did you get all 100 jigsaw pieces? We sure did, Mr. Mumbo. Ah, so show us your secrets, Mask. 
Okay. Pictures show things are missed. Secrets that are in new for new game. Banjo Tui. Banjo Tui? Sounds great. Is it any good? Mumbo's jaw dropped in awe. Uh, isn't it called Banjo Kazooie Tui? I'd better be in it too. Short stuff. Banjo Tui make Banjo Kazooie look like joke. Mumbo show you pictures of stuff can use in new game here. Yeah, so this is basically going to go over all the stop and swap. Well, not all of them. There's three of them they're going to go over. Even though there's like seven items you can collect, they're only going to show you three. And so there's a lot of people who, you know, when you beat the game 100%, you're shown these pictures and it's like you can't you can't get access to these items. So people are like, what the hell is this? Like, Oh, it's supposed to be, f you know, maybe there's something in Banjo-Tooie that you can get to unlock them, but like, no, you, you can't. So it really kind of sucks that, um, you know, that these are completely inaccessible for the most part. I again, you have to have the code. And I really do think that they'll probably, they probably were planning on giving you the code in Banjo-Tooie. Because the code is like super long. You could probably write it down and say, hey, go to the sandcastle floor in Banjo-Kazooie and enter this in and you can get one of the eggs or whatever. That's probably how it worked. And then you took the egg and then you, you stop and swap to to get the item in Banjo-Tooie. There we go. And that's what it looks like out in the wild. What's also interesting too, I don't think I mentioned this, but you can also use the stop and swap items in uh, Nuts and Bolts as well, right? So for the Xbox Live Arcade game, which actually has the functionality of stop and swap in it, um, it all works there properly. Not only does it work on Banjo-Tooie, but it also works on Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, as they give you a whole bunch of, like, special items and some, like, really, like, really good uh, items for your car. Like, when you build your car, it gives you some really good engines and stuff like that. That was pretty good. And there we go, there's the ice key. Yeah, Banjo-Tooie. A lot of people are mixed on that one. People complain... Or, uh, people... I, I don't know. It's it's kind of like... In Banjo-Tooie, the worlds are a lot larger, and some people think... Some people feel that it's it kind of distracts a bit, I guess, and that there's nothing in between areas. Right? It's like you go long stretches of area in the game where there's really not much of, much going on there. But, uh, well, I'll get, I'll get into that a little bit later. Well, how do we get those? Mumbo not telling. Find out in Banjo-Tooie. Except we never will. <laughs> Bye, Tootie. We'll never see you again. Uh. Oh, yeah, one thing I didn't mention. Uh, so Grunty, uh, she cast a spell as she was falling. And initially the idea was to have it so that... Well, okay, I'll explain. Rock's so heavy, but Klongo must rescue Mistress. All the jiggies you did, Snatch. But I'll be back for my rematch. And there we go, the end. We beat the game. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So let's just see what the what the final count is. Let's see how much I screwed it up by. 4 hours and 40 minutes. Holy shit. Holy shit. I like that. That's fun. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, it sucks I died, though. And, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. So anyways, yeah, that last spell that Grunty shoots, uh, initially the developers wanted to have it so that it did hit Banjo and Kazooie, and it turned them into a frog. And you got to control 2D, and you would have to go and rescue them somehow. 
Uh, I'm not really sure how that would work. Um, I kind of wish that they did it, because that sounds a lot of fun. Uh, especially being able to play as 2D, I think that would be pretty interesting. But, um, I guess, and some people make this claim, it's like, it, it would kind of screw up the, the flow of the game. A bit, because it's like, you just beat Grunty, right? And now you have to do this, like, this extra spot to just finish the game. It just seems a little bit weird. But, uh, I think it would have been fun. Yeah, 4 minutes and 40... 4 hours and 40 minutes, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm very happy with that one, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, pretty significant from these other ones. Uh, although, there were a couple of things that I did I did do extra when it came to the other ones. Um, like, for instance, Grunty's Fern is fun. I, uh, I actually completed all of the squares. I think I'll show that footage later because the audio in that section is actually still pretty good on one recording. So I'll probably upload a different video trying to go through all of the squares there, but I, I felt like I didn't really I didn't really want to do it again. <laughs> so um so there's that. So anyways, uh thank you so much for watching my playthrough of Banjo Kazooie. It means a lot to me to know that you would be able to hear my voice right now for those people that are that are hearing this. Um that you would stick through and watch my entire playthrough of the game. Hopefully you learned a lot of stuff. Uh I didn't you know, there's a bunch of crazy speedrunner techniques that I don't know of, uh, so I wasn't able to show all of them off, but I, I tried to show what I did know, and uh, I hope you learned a lot. Uh, so with that in mind, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you'll check out the next video, and I will see you later. Bye-bye! Uh, <laughs>